Oh, I thought it said it ended. <laughs> I thought it said it ended. I was like, oh, that was it. If you have not done act two, please refrain from the court. We are beginning. Go to Hotel de Board. Poor Lenny. Poor child. I came here several times with my father when I was little, but stopped eating here as often after growing up. I hope the food here will be to your taste. Oh, it's a doll. What was that sound? Oh, don't worry. We haven't eaten at a hotel like this in a while. <laughs> Paimon's getting excited already. Paimon's mask is gone. Oh, in that case, I'll go order for us first. Please wait here a moment. Yeah, Navia's look is like the fanciest of all fancy. The Queen of Geo. Ooh, everything looks so good. People in Fontaine sure know how to enjoy life. <laughs> Why, of course. Go ahead, try whatever you like. If the food's good, I'll make a group reservation for the rest of Spina di Rosula next time. Spina di Rosula. And if it's not? Well, uh, then I'll still bring everyone, albeit with only one dish per table. You uh, sure have your own way of doing things. Oh, be grateful, Pi Bong. It's a farewell meal, but we could also treat it like a victory feast, right? We did just win that case after all. It's certainly worth celebrating. It was a pleasure working with you. I mean, she really did save us. Like, she came out of nowhere. Oh, true. Very true. In that case, boss, we'll have another two dishes. <laughs> Dang, look at that. Got the, the drumsticks. Did I see a baguette? <laughs> Lasagna, apparently. Speaking of cases, do you think that the mastermind behind the serial disappearances will get caught soon now that this has all happened? Well, we've certainly taken a big step forward, but I feel that's about it. We know that there's an organization that means to dissolve these young women, but we still don't know what they are really after. It's a whole organization. Ugh. If it hadn't happened right in front of us, Paimon wouldn't have ever believed that a person could be dissolved like that. <laughs> right? Yet it was because this was such a preposterous notion that the investigation could never really move forward before. Ugh. If only that guy could have finished speaking! We were so close to hearing who was behind it. True. In such investigations, even the smallest step can seem like a yawning chasm if the trail of clues is cut off. Chasm? To be honest, I don't have high hopes for any follow-up that the authorities might conduct. Well, now we have solid evidence, so at least we can we have something. It's not that I don't have faith in their ability. It's just that a different perspective is required in some matters. It's easy to guard against and deceive a single, narrow perspective. A shift in thinking is required at such times in order to produce a breakthrough. Which is exactly why the Spina di Rosula exists. Those highfalutin folk are not all-knowing. That's why we exist. <laughs> to seep into the cracks where filth falls through. Where their watch fails them. That's the kind of problems we solve. The highfalutin folk. Things were simpler than they actually are. <sighs> it's all right. Well, this was supposed to be a farewell meal, so I doubt you have further interest in this business, right? No, we definitely we need you more. Oh my gosh. Let's talk about something else. Like, uh, what are your future plans? We wanted to ask the Hydro Archon for some information, but we haven't had much opportunity to do so. Yeah. We've ended up with a legal debate with the person we want to get information from. That's true. We didn't have a chance to speak to her after the trial ended. It didn't really seem like the right time or place to do it anyway. We're just like, I just want to talk to you. Hmm. I see. So, your primary objective, which has been foiled so far, was to have a chat with the Hydro Archon. I've heard that there's a long line of people waiting to meet Lady Farina. I suspect mm. you'll be waiting for quite a while, 
considering that you missed your chance today. Yeah, we've heard that she's super popular here in Fontaine, and that it'll be tough getting any of her time. Does anybody get any of her time? Hmm. Well, would you consider some more, uh, unique ways? Perhaps even methods of, uh, let's say, questionable legality? Navia? Guess that's Spina di Rosula's boss for you. Chock full of sketchy ideas. Well, what did you have in mind? Oh, well, I guess I don't have, I have a choice. Well, one way would be to infiltrate a performance troupe at the Opera House, only to abandon your act at the play's climax and ask to speak to her after the performance. I'm sure Lady Farina would be eager to see the ending, and would agree in order to finish watching the play, don't you think? Hmm, she does seem like like to watch everything happen. Uh, could you suggest something a little more practical? This plan seems pretty hard to pull off. We'd have to go learn how to act, and acting's really hard. <laughs> Especially for the traveler. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, here's another. Find a way to conceal yourselves under her bed. Then, wake her up in the dead of night and demand <laughs> answers. Don't let her go back to sleep until she answers all your questions. Jesus. I can personally testify that this one works. When I'm sleepy, I'll do anything as long as I can finally get some sleep. I would love to see that happen. <laughs> point i overlooked that part i was just thinking about leveraging a person's desire for sleep how can you overlook something like that <laughs> all right all right no more joking around huh perhaps you could oh i don't know cut the line when she's on a break you hmm. did defeat her in court clearing citizens of hers from false accusations False accusation she had nearly upheld personally. I imagine that she feels quite ashamed about the whole thing. Yeah, she was like, can you at least give me some d dignity? Or like something like that. You mean that if we catch her while she's on a break, she might be too embarrassed to refuse? Oh, that does make some sense. It's worth a try. Why don't we give it a try after this meal? You know, strike while the iron is hot and all. Huh? Paimon, did you drink my Fanta? Uh, was this your drink? <laughs> Sorry about that. Paimon wasn't really paying attention and the cup was right next to Paimon. Would you like to order another? No, it's fine. We're just about done here. Alright. Honestly, Paimon wouldn't recommend Fanta anyway. It tastes kind of salty and icky. Is that so? Huh. Well, in that case, we'll have to blacklist the Fanta here then. If we're all finished eating, then I'll go pay. Yeah, we're stuffed. Thanks for the treat, Navia. Uh, in any case, I wish you smooth sailing. I'll see you again, partner. Partner. Well, that was nice. Oh, I thought it said it ended. <laughs> I thought it said it ended. I was like, oh, well, that was it. <laughs> Fastest Archon quest ever. We're done. Those are the Fountain Plaza uh, in front of the Opera House. I thought it was like, it's over. There aren't many people around anymore. Looks like that boat we took to Araneus might have been the last one. The shame. Oh, uh, so even more so? I thought that was like, trying to say that the other guy was the coward or his name was Cowl, but she's still going. Hmm. Looks like we're back here again. The Huh? Traveler? Are you hearing voices again? Yes, and it's clearer than it was during the day. Oof. That's kind of spooky. Are you sure we don't want to come back in the morning? Vache? Vache? Hey, why are you still walking towards it? Hmm. There might be something nasty in the water. <laughs> I can feel strong emotion. Is it getting a little bit blurry? Uh, 
Mache, right? That's the first. Hey, traveler, stop walking. Come on, wake up. It's just that scene where I knew it. I knew it was gonna be ocean. And it wasn't that that I kind of looked like it in the trailer. Where is this? Vache, are you my dear Vache? <laughs> All I can think of is the actual boss. No, wait. You seem to be someone else. Do you know Vache? Do you know where my love is? Oh, yeah, because this fountain is like, it's like the romantic kind of area. You make wishes at. I'm afraid not. I'm sorry, who are you? I'm... Wait. Who am I? I'm very sorry. I fear I do not know. My memories feel like they have been washed away like a flood. So many fragments dissolved amidst the tide, never to be recovered. How much have I lost? Mm -hmm. How many things that I once held dear while on land have I since forgotten? You were a human once? An assassin from our homeland. <laughs> we were once human. How did you end up turning into this? Yes, that is what I was once. But now, I am but the consciousness of one who has lost their form. Hmm. Usually you lose your form, you just... They're just gone. You lost your form. I do not know how I came to be like this either. I only vaguely remember being covered in light blue water. And then all grew dim. Oh, well, that's not true. Because we do have, like, idea. Or idea from the, the Mirage. She could also be a human. She could go back to being an Oceanid. So you were, like, a special individual. Light blue water could have been... Or could, we, could she be one of the girls who were dissolved? I also remember going to many places. I loved adventure, loved exploring places of peril. No matter where I went, Vache would go with me. I knew how dearly he loved me. And I also loved him equally as much. Vache. Yeah, it does kind of sound like, yeah, the one in Chingsa. Or like the one that, yeah, right? Kind of like the same tone. But now, we can no longer go back. The pain of such parting. I never knew how heavy it could be. Need me to find him? No. Our reunion no longer has any meaning. There is no way for us to create any new memories. Dang. The thought of me gives him no sucker. So let it lie forgotten beneath the waters. If you meet Vache, tell him not to look for me. Tell him to move on. That is the only thing I still remember. Hmm. It seems like she wants him back and then she's like, you know what? No. I will be hard for him to forget you. Perhaps that is so. As I was submerged in the waters, losing consciousness, I saw Vache above the surface. His eyes were filled with such sorrow, such longing. So she remembers now. If only I could have comforted him, told him that I did not suffer. Indeed, I had felt a great warm that means Vashe was a witness to the fact that you dissolved you dissolved or you fell into the water I guess either one is gonna result in the same ending is that what you call it dissolving if anything I consider it a form of release well it was kind of a some kind of release it was a state of neither fear nor frenzy with only an endless peace, like the water still surface. 
I could also liken it to being a thirsty person who drinks water for the first time and only then sees how they have lived for so long in a world of endless want and anxiety. It seems that it was good for you to dissolve that way. I mean, it wasn't, but at least just as you're describing it as, as if it was satisfying. Seems after the body is dissolved, some measure of consciousness still remains. I think I hear your companion. It's time for you to go, I think. Is that Paimon? <laughs> All right, I wonder how many times. I wonder how much time has passed in reality. Where are we? Farewell, then. I am glad that you were able to sense my presence. Remember, if you see Vache, tell him not to seek me out any longer. So what do you want? Nothing. Wait, what is going on? What just happened? Well, this happened awful fast. Ooh. Dang, you're doing flying. Demoiselle, look out! It's boss. Dear God, it's a whole army of Gardamex. This happened so fast. What? Clorand? Clorand. Oh my god. Oh my god. Quick, now's our chance. <laughs> Dang. Now they're working together, but it's an awkward relationship. <laughs> Cloran. I should thank you for lending us your sword there, Clorand. But before I do so, could you explain how you managed to show up here? Just let it be. Navia, please. I followed you. It seemed to me that danger has followed you more closely as of late. I believe that following someone without their knowledge is actually called stalking, is it not? Mm. Mr. Callus's last wish was for me to ensure your safety, and I will not betray his trust. He would do the same were he alive today. She sounds very just. Mr. Callus? Do not speak of my father. Sorry, demoiselle. I was not strong enough. Thank you for your aid, Miss Clorand, but do keep an eye out for your manner of speech. I believe we all wish to avoid unnecessary emotional harm. Sorry, I did not consider your feelings. I don't know the backstory, but it seems like Clorand is being really really honest really nice i don't really see what what their backstory is that makes navia not like her but whatever what else do you know how did you come to the conclusion that i'd be in grave danger i doubt i know much more than you but i believe that the mastermind behind the serial disappearances is very powerful that was insane though that cutscene. your performance tonight will almost certainly attract their attention these performances are really just a target for bad things to happen, huh? I'm sure they've known about me. To be honest, I'm shocked it's taken them this long to act against me. And what about these Gardamex? I thought only those associated with the Maison Guardianage could control them. None of these mecha have serial numbers. I was sure to check a moment ago. 
They are not the ones used by the authorities to enforce the law. Oh, okay, I thought somebody like hacked them or something. Man, if that cutscene happened that fast within Act Two, holy, what else do we have in store? I can only conclude that some powerful or wealthy party must have obtained them via illegal means, deploying them as a private force of sorts. What? Your point being that they're out of Spina di Rosula's league then? Yes. Be careful and do not act rashly. Look at her looking out for you. I will continue investigating no matter what. We will bring the truth to light. <sighs> Regardless, oh. thank you for your help today, Clarand. But if you get any ideas, tell me first. I don't much appreciate being followed. I do not think that they'll strike again anytime soon. So I shall stop following you. Good day, all. Good day, jolly good day. My goodness. Right. I suppose that's the best news we've gotten today. Demoiselle, I believe that Miss Clorand was being sincere with you. I agree with you, Melis. If we tried, we could attempt to thaw relations a little. I agree. I know, I just... She's... Uh. Who? What? Where? What just happened? Oh, thank goodness! I meant that we were done for! <laughs> you would have been. Move the hat so it looks exactly like her <laughs> Those Gardamex came out of nowhere while you were unconscious, and Nadia and her gang saved us! Oh, and there was that champion duelist named Clorin who came out to save us too! We got lucky there. Paimon probably couldn't have fought them off otherwise. You definitely could not have fought them off, Paimon. Champion Duelist Glorin, the CDC. So you're a fighter now, Paimon? Uh. Oh, <laughs> come oh. now. Forget all that polite talk. That wasn't really a farewell meal we had back there. Not for me, anyway. In truth, I hope that every meal we have together shall be a victory feast. As such, we're still partners. There's no need to thank me. In crime. It will take 50 years for me to match Demoiselle's magnanimity. It's boss. If it were me, I would have joined the Spina di Rosula on account of her goodwill long ago. <laughs> All right, you two. That's enough. Wait, 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 wait. I can understand the guy on the left, but the guy on the right was fighting out his heart's content, too. I, g I give kudos to him. Actually, Navia, how did you know that we were in danger? You sure did show up in the nick of time. Millions, millions. Well, to be honest, you're the one who tipped us off, Paimon. Huh? Really? Paimon contributed to that? Cool. Paimon's even more amazing than she thought. Yes. All thanks to you grabbing my drink by mistake. Uh, how did that help? After we parted ways, I was on the way back to one of our bases when I suddenly thought of what you said. That the Fanta tasted kind of salty and icky. Wait, do you mean that well, I tasted a strange as well, but I can be sure. Fanta only comes in sweet flavors. So how could it have tasted salty? The color of the drink, if I recall, had also been a bit off. Did we get poisoned? So the Fanta had been spiked with water from the Primordial Sea? So we're all going to dissolve. Well, you are. Yes. So if you hadn't drunk that cup for me... Oh, dang. Spina di Rosula is preparing the grandest of awards for you as we speak for saving the boss. When did that... Dang, they were really out to get her. Somebody spiked the drink. I don't even know we were going to the to go eat. Wow, people in Fontaine are like super crafty. Good grief. I could have been it right there. Paimon saved Navia. Yeah, actually. We don't know where Paimon's from and we don't, don't really know where we are from, e from either. Fortunately, Paimon, neither of us are from are from Paimon, <laughs> are from Fontaine. Otherwise, we would have been dissolved. I sent people to Hotel de Boer to investigate. 
But whoever did this left no trace at all. Who is doing all this? That's when I figured out that you might be in danger and hurried here as quickly as I could. Like, why would they go after us too? All we did was defend Linny and Court and help clear his name. Well, probably not going for us. Now we're caught up in this mess too, aren't we? Well, you did foil a plan that they were probably pretty proud of and almost got their name in the process. Speaking of which, did anything strange happen when you drank the primordial seawater? No, I was gonna say maybe we saw the ocean it, but well, it can't be coincidence that the traveler fainted just now. She said that she heard that voice calling for Vashe again. Oh, and this time Paimon heard it too, but it was real faint. Does this situation have to do with the primordial seawater thing? According to Lynette, the ability to hear voices like that has to do with one's sens sensitivity to the hydro element. Does Seawater raises someone's sensitivity to hydro when it's used on people who are not from Fontaine? That doesn't sound like too much of a bad thing, to be honest. I've also gained some new intel. New intel? While you were out cold? Uh, well, let's hear it, shall we? The voice in the font the voice in the fountain belongs to one of the missing women. A person named Vashir was witness or was a witness when she dissolved. Oh, is important to everyone about what happened while you were unconscious Vache. that name doesn't ring a bell i suppose he hasn't set forward as a witness in court lately hmm. since he saw that young woman dissolve he was at least at the crime scene but he never gave testimony or any information regarding people dissolving in the primordial seawater could he have been threatened Maybe it just was him. If he's still alive, should I searching for him? Well, if he, yeah, maybe if he is. Yeah, so that was the only reason why Palmine could actually hear it, huh? Yeah. Otherwise, she would have been like, huh? Yes, thank you. This is very important information indeed. We will continue to investigate. Alrighty, partner. By way, you mean us too? Oh, you mean you'll help us investigate? Well, you did say that our farewell meal didn't really count. That means we're still partners, right? And besides, we're in this now whether we like it or not. You're not gonna let those people who targeted us get off the hook so easily, are you, Traveler? This will, pro this will prove to be their biggest mistake. I don't know about that one. Demoiselle, do try not to look quite so pleased. You are the face of Spina di Rosula, after all. <coughs> you talk too much. Well, in that case, let's head back to one of our bases, shall we? I'll arrange accommodations for you. Oh, well, let's go I somewhere also else. We have some plans to go over, and hopefully we can deepen our bonds as partners. But we'll take that one step at a time, I guess. So, like, any Spina de Rosa, like, location is probably compromised. Don't worry, you two. With us around, our base is definitely secure. Nah. What? Was that achievement? The neck and fully, fully over. The, uh, wolf. <laughs> it's right up ahead, but let's make sure we weren't followed first. I've been keeping watch, Demoiselle. I haven't spotted anyone suspicious thus far. Huh, very good. But let's not let our guard down for now. I shall find rooms for our respected guests. Thank you, Malus. Now, Got rooms? let's continue, Traveler. Hmm. <sighs> oh, we went in the sewers? Oh, shoot. Blue sound, right? Dude, this is... Oh, no. Uh, oh, that guy scared me. All this stuff just reminds me of like a whole different game. This is giving me like nothing but Dishonored vibes right now. With Corvo and Emily. A lot less dirty, but... So this is how you get down here. Everybody's, yeah, everybody's dressed differently. Boulder Town, yeah. <laughs> yes. 
the crossover. Here I was thinking the sewer was like where all the bad people went. There's that teleport. Holy. Oh, you know what? Bioshock. That's the kind of vibe I'm getting right now. Bioshock 1 and 2. Like that sign? Oh, that's the screams. Screams Bioshock. All the robots and stuff too. We got a we got a doctor. Granny's here. <laughs> what does that say? Imagined. Your accommodations have been arranged. Under the present circumstances, I can confidently say it's the best we have. Thank you. <laughs> well, our funds have been a little tight lately. Yeah, thanks for that meal. After all, we don't allow illegal or unethical profiteering. In fact, our funds often come from citizenry who support us. Oh, are we depending off of that? Seems like it's tough times for everyone. But if you have the support of the people, that does sound like it's worth it. <sighs> to be honest, our financial situation was a lot better back when my father was in charge a few years ago. <sighs> oh. I'm afraid I'm not quite his equal. Your father? He was the previous boss of Spina di Rosula, right? How did he... Hi, Ma, you acts like... Oh. I mean, it is interesting to see how he died, but like, Hotmot's always asking the questions that are going to make people cringe. Demoiselle, if you'll allow me to explain. And uh, no, I I'll explain it myself. I suppose I couldn't run from this topic forever. And as partners, this is something I hope they can understand. So what I'll be like, yeah, my, my father passed away long ago. And Papa will go, how'd your father die? <laughs> like, I take it, Papa. My father's name is Callus. Yes, the same one they call Callus the Unfaithful in the streets. Callus the Unfaithful? Three years ago, he was accused of murdering his own friend. But he chose a duel to defend his honor instead of standing trial. He died in the duelist's ring. Yeah, we heard about that. You can... If you're gonna end up going to jail, you can try and fight at the last minute. But he didn't make it. Oh no. Oh no. But I do not believe my father was a murderer. I'm sure he was set up. His best friend, huh? At the time, I believed that if he only stood trial and was duly investigated, something amiss would crop up and prove his innocence. But strangely, he not only requested the duel himself, but rumor has it that even after being seriously injured to the point where he could be deemed as having lost the duel, he refused to surrender, determined to die in the arena. Hmm. <laughs> Three years later, I still don't understand why he did that. How could he protect his honor if he's dead? If anything, he gave up his chance to defend himself. Maybe he knew about the prophecy and didn't want to see it through. Do you have any clues to why? The closest piece of info I have is that my father had been investigating the serial disappearances case at the time of his death. Hmm, yep. Maybe he didn't want you to disappear. Ah, so that's why you're so determined to get to the bottom of that case. That's right. Also tried to investigate the murder my father was implicated in, but I haven't found a single new clue in my countless reviews of the investigation records. Ooh, what if what if Chlorand was the one to duel him? Ugh. Nah, if that was the case, I don't think Navia could have looked her in the face. However, I believe that if the murder case is related to those behind the disappearances, they must know something. I must know what really happened. Was my father coerced? Framed? Even if he really did kill his friend, I must get to the truth. Clorin just kills her father and then she's like, hey, sorry. I had to do it. <sighs> if only he'd been more open with me when he was still alive. 
He even hid the fact that my mother died due to complications when giving birth to me. Ooh. Dang. And now, here I am investigating his death. <laughs> you really are a handful, aren't you, Papa? Jeez, man. The double whammy. Seeking the truth for the sake of your family. You know, we're quite alike in this regard. Demoiselle, please. If there is anything oh? I can do, anything at all. I also will never believe that Master Callus murdered anyone. There are none whom I respect more than the two of you, Demoiselle. Master Callus did so much good in life, yet all it took was one murder case for him to be dubbed Callus the Unfaithful. I mean, get involved in a murder case, yeah, I think all your accolades are gone. Even our supporters decreased greatly due to that incident, hence our strained finances at present. Wait, if Callus was such a good man, wouldn't people at least be a little suspicious when he was accused? Good question, Paimon. Uh, no, perhaps people just revel in that kind of drama. It's not something exclusive to people from Fontaine, really. Everyone's like that. People love watching the evil turn over a new leaf, but they also enjoy watching good people fall into an abyss from one slip-up just as much. That's true. But how could... Ugh, never mind. If Callus was really falsely accused, we have to find the truth. He didn't deserve to have that happen to him. Uh, there is one other thing. Master Callus' opponent in the duel was Ms. Clorand. Well, that would explain it. That would explain it. I said literally what I was saying, and then I was like, no, because she wouldn't even be able to look at her. So, honestly, she kind of handled that pretty well, considering that's what happened. Dang, man. I had a feeling, too. I was like, what reason could have been for her to have animosity towards her? But, yeah. I mean, we are, Clorin's not going to purposely say, all right, I'm going to die just so he can live. Obviously, she has to fight, too, so. Oh. It's complicated, yeah. Well, then, isn't that as good as saying that she was the one who killed him? I wonder why the mood was a little changed when you two. Yeah. yeah. Can just let go and move on from. Yeah, that's, uh, that makes it real complicated. Miss Clorand has always placed great emphasis on the honorable nature of the duel. If her opponent doesn't yield, she will not stop either. She knew Master Callus beforehand and greatly respected him, but seeing how he was resolute in the arena. Dang, imagine that. Knowing somebody and then you have to fight them there was only ever one choice she could have made it's not that i don't understand her at all but i i just can't deal with this yet yeah i and that's totally understandable i get it don't worry navia Paimon knows how you feel you don't have to force yourself to do that afterward miss coran told us that at the start of the jewel Master Callus requested that she ensure Demoiselle Navia's safety. Hmm. Oh, wait. Sloan told us at the other side of the duel. Oh, I see. Okay. And that indicates that he intended to die in that duel? Yes, that is our understanding as well. Hmm. <sighs> oh, Papa. What madness drove you to ask the person who killed you to take care of me? All right, anyway, that's the information I wanted to share with you. Even if it did sound like I was just complaining towards the end. Oh, I understand. I, I, I get it. I have nothing to say else to that. Uh, thanks. You two should go and rest. This was quite a day after all. Yeah! I would eat. Please. Relax and get some sleep. We will ensure you rest soundly. I don't know if I want to go to sleep again. Wake up to another garden mech attack. Whether it be responsibility for Spina di Rosula or Master Callus's death, 
It all landed on Demoiselle's shoulders so suddenly. This won't do. I must become stronger. Well, Silver, uh... You know, I got this Hydro Vision sitting around. If you want it, you know, you can be... You can be a little bit stronger if you want. So Nervalette maintains an archive of case files? Whew. Guess that's the hard-working Chief Justice for you. In that case, let's go talk to him, shall we? Um... About that. Hmm? Aren't you coming along, Navia? Did you get tired? Uh, no, it's nothing. Let's go see the Honorable Chief Justice. So we can see him, but we can't see Farina? Rip. Once upon a time in Fluvsundra? Well, you didn't pay attention to that last one. Look at go. Oh, I didn't know we can, we can actually walk in this place. Ooh. Fancy. What was this again? Hmm. <laughs> Over there. Hold! Please state your business here. The Chief Justice <laughs> is presently occupied with official matters. Huh. Sadine. This place does look pretty heavily guarded. Guess that proves that Nervalet's files are really secure. Nervalet. Hey, don't you recognize us? Huh? Who are <laughs> you? Just to be clear, <clears throat> I don't care who you are or who you might be related to. Our rules make no exceptions. It's like a really weird looking pom pom. See? They've got great discipline, too. Yep, yep. Heaven can tell. Yep, yep. If you're here just to crack jokes, I can point you towards the exit. Unlike some, we're busy. So please leave if you don't have a reason to be here. Uh, no, no. What I meant to say is, shouldn't you remember us from a few days ago? We were at the trial of the great magician Linny. I mean, that wasn't the same one, was it? Oh, oh, yes, I remember. I read about it in the Steambird. You, you must be Linny's attorneys. Ugh, it's all coming back to me now. Your voice sounds familiar. We're here today to report and archive some information on a follow-up case. Huh, is that even a thing? Hmm, of course. <laughs> Don't worry, we're here on official business. You can trust us. All right then, I'll let you through. The Chief Justice is just inside. Ah. Thanks so much. He was busy though, but I guess not. Go to the Chief Justice office. Hmm. Don't get any ideas now. Little Chief Justice room. Oh. Speaking of achievements. Alright, Chief. Oh, knock on the door. Please come in. Oh, he knows. <laughs> there he is. There he is. Giga Chad. He wasn't busy at all. Monsieur Nouvelle. It's all right. Please let me know how I may be of assistance to you. Uh, so you're not mad at us? We are looking for a man called Vache. He may have been an eyewitness in the serial disappearances case. If we can find him, we may be able to unearth some key information on the case. Ah, I see. In that case, please wait here a moment while I browse through the files. Huh, well, there you go. That Nervalette would be so easy to talk to. 
He's only ever, like, stern with Farina. Or when he has to be. Tick tock, tick tock. Unfortunately, we have nothing. I'm quite certain that no one by the name of Vache has been involved in any case, criminal or civil, in the past several years. There are no records of him either in the files or in my memory. Hmm. Well, I guess we're about to square one. Traveler, what if it was really just a dream? It was all a dream. Now, I probably... So what he did was he went back to Ermansol and erased himself and died. Is that so? All right, then. Thank you so much, Monsieur Neuvillette. We'll take our leave now. Ahem. That was more like a hold on. Miss Navia, I can understand how you feel. Your father, Callus, was a truly exceptional man. Don't speak of my we father. We deeply regret his passing. Mm. And what are you trying to say, Monsieur Novillette? Are you trying to console me? Extend your sympathy? Or just express some tendril of regret? No. You are not trying to do any of that. I can hear it in your voice. There's no emotion behind your words. You only said those things because you felt like you should. He knows it's true. It's just like last time. After my father took his place in the duelist ring, I pushed through the guards to talk to you as a last resort. You even told me then that you thought there was something fishy with the case, yet you still allowed the duel to go ahead. In your eyes, the value of a human life is nothing compared to those cold laws you hold so dear. True. Trailer line. If you truly regret my father's death, then why didn't you call a stop to the duel? Why didn't you give me the power to stop him from throwing his life away? Why did you just let him die, despised what? and hated by all? It was all your fault. Everything was hanging on a thread at that moment. Just the tiniest effort could have changed everything. Damn, man. There are still so many things I never got to tell him. So many questions he still owes me answers to. If you really have no heart, then just look me in the eyes. I, Navia, will show you the true meaning of regret. Dismissed. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Navia. You and my father are truly alike. You keep all kinds of things in your heart and never say a word to anyone. It's not so much that you can't feel, but that you would never express anything. Oh well. In any case, everyone already knows full well the apathy of the Chief Justice. Mm. My apologies for taking my emotions out on you, Monsieur Chief Justice. Let's go, Traveler and Paimon. Man has no emotion. Zero. He's not human. Even still, you know, nothing to say. Yeah, it was. Bro. Navia, are you okay? Poor Navia. I'm fine. Oh, it's raining. Uh, rain? It's raining. You're right. Wasn't it still sunny when we went into the building? And there shouldn't be any active trials today. How strange. Yeah, I feel like why didn't he even why did he even bring it up if he wasn't gonna be sympathetic? Maybe he's one of those like non understandable people where like he actually does feel bad, but he just doesn't know how to express it. I don't know. Now that I think of it, on the day my father was convicted of murder, it was also raining. Which means someone else is going to die tonight. Did you think of something? Your father's case? Was he outside when it happened? Yeah, yeah, he was outside. Had to be. It was uncovered and the rain could fall there. Why? 
do you think the rain could have affected the crime scene? Oh, yeah. Did he get dissolved? Or did he get, like, stabbed? That thought has occurred to us before. We've even expanded the search area to try to account for that. But didn't find anything of value. There was something that you didn't know at the time. Oh? Wait. Uh, you don't mean... The fact that people can be turned into water. So you're saying that the true murderer could have been turned into water? And then got washed away with the rain? Yeah, but... It's very possible, but, I mean, they, they tell it as if, like, Chlorine did the finishing blow. Yeah! And if that's what had happened, then no one would have believed your dad, even if he explained what he saw to the authorities! Oh, or maybe the, maybe his friend disappeared, and they blamed it on him. And then he did get killed by Chlorine. I really think I found a true genius for a partner. <laughs> You're completely right! How did I not connect the dots earlier? I don't know. I would have fought to at least try and or maybe he did try. I just didn't believe him because it was so preposterous. Oh, dang. Look at that. Yeah, I'm loving these underground areas. This looks nice. <laughs> There's no need to be so surprised. While it may look like a ship, it's actually Spina di Rosula's headquarters. Hmm? My father was the one who asked for it to be built like this. Perhaps our taste in exterior design is the only thing we occasionally had in common. A gigantic and glamorous ship embodies discovery, opportunity, ambition, and conquest. It symbolizes Spina di Rosula's bright and limitless future. Hmm. I think I'll certainly get why you like it. And Paimon thought you were bluffing when you said Spina di Rosula had a glorious past. Paimon was confused why a group with such a history would live in the sewers. But now that Paimon has seen this ship for herself, she's been convinced. Yeah, it looks very... Very ancient, but it looks like somebody, like, worked on it a little bit. Which is what happened. Well, Poisson is where Spina di Rosula began, after all. It's our main base. Our home. So the other ones are second home? Melus, we're back! Melus. Apologies for the wait, demoiselle, and our most important partners. You said before that you still had some business at the court. What brings you back to Poisson so quickly? Uh, about that. It's because my partner here reminded me of something really important. You see, what if my father's case had something to do with water from the primordial sea? You still remember, right, Malus? On that night, it was raining? Yes, the case was mm. quite similar to that of Mr. Linney's. Both were what you'd call impossible murders. Could a mastermind be the same person? This person's on a roll. Could you tell us a bit more about what happened before? Yeah, of course. Many years ago, something called Synth began to gain popularity in Poisson. Synth. At a glance, it was a kind of drink that could excite your mood and produce many pleasant hallucinations. Well, that sounds like something else. Turned into water also mentioned that the primordial water could be used to produce some kind of potion? Yep. Yes, he did. Considering what we know now, it's almost certain that Synth is created using water from the primordial sea. Yeah, that sounds like drugs. <laughs> if you drink Synth for an extended amount of time, you'll suffer many side effects, such as losing the ability to focus or control your emotions. Checks out. And if you were to stop drinking it completely, You'll experience flashes of paranoia and anxiety while lacking Withdrawals, energy to yep. do anything. It's an extremely dangerous substance. Don't do drugs, kids. As he oversaw Poisson, my father was compelled or to put a anyone. stop to synth abuse and called for Ever. a complete ban of it. So it started out to be like a nice, a nice thing, and then people started to abuse it, and then it got too far, and then it got banned. So how does this lead into... Boss's uncompromising attitude incurred the synth vendor's wrath, 
But no matter how much they threatened or bribed him, he refused to yield. Hmm. Not only that, the boss became determined to find the mastermind behind the synth operation and put an end to the problem once and for all. Yes, but the enemy was very cunning. <laughs> so he could never get anything out of the dealers, all of whom only sold the stuff and weren't privy to the rest of the operation. So that organization is probably still going around. Recognizing that, my father decided to contact the dealers in secret and cultivate personal relationships with them. Finally, he was able to convince someone to become his informant. The man's name was Jacques. He felt greatly ashamed about his work after seeing many families destroyed by synth abuse. Shock. So it sounds like she said. A shocks? Shock? That night, my father hosted a banquet at his countryside estate. He planned to meet up and exchange information with Jacques over some food. But then, we heard two gunshots from the courtyard. We raced to the scene and found my father, still holding a gun, and Jacques, who was already dead on the ground. Dang, man. How, how badly could this be set up? Two gunshots, he's dead, and then the guy's like, Huh? It wasn't me. <laughs> like, come on. Dang, man. It really is a city of justice. Shaq. Shaquille O'Neal. Huh? How did that happen? Aren't they on the same side? They didn't do it. it. Sounds just like Lenny's case, doesn't it? In both cases, the culprit seemed obvious. But neither appeared to have any motive at all. What is with these setups? It's like... The perfect setup. Looking back on it, though... I now believe the most important clue was something we all overlooked at the time. There were pieces of clothing left at the scene. Yep. Could have belonged to someone who got this all. Precisely. It's all thanks to you that I made the connection now. Back then, we all just thought they were some costumes that Jacques used to disguise himself at the banquet. But, considering it now, it's almost certain that they belong to a third person at the scene. With one extra person, we'll also need to reconsider why the two shots were fired. Hmm. Maybe your father got into an argument with, with shock, shock, shock. Well, what about the third person was to blame? Hmm. Yeah, I don't think about the third person. You're right. We still don't know what happened. But my intuition tells me that we're on the right track to figuring it all out. I'm finally headed towards the truth. After all this time... Jacques was an empathetic man who was infinitely remorseful for his past actions. It's unlikely that he turned on boss with zero warning. I think this third person is probably the key to the full truth. The second time it's a third person. Whoever this guy is, he is like, he's an honor. On that note, for what he's trying to do. Even though this will not please you, demoiselle, as you're and your father's butler, I must still offer a word of warning. Our opponent is insidious and cruel. They are extremely difficult to deal with, and Boss has already lost his life trying to bring them to justice. Even though Spina de Rosula has lost most of its former glory, Poisson has welcomed a new time of peace, and we have been allowed to live out our lives. Yeah, the piano's hitting. There is no need to follow your father's path. It would be both wise and in line with Boss's wishes to step back and give up on the case. It's now we're giving up? If that's indeed what he wished for, then he should have told me that himself. Well. Was I not the closest person to him? And yet I was the one most kept in the dark. He had too many secrets he didn't want to share with you. He didn't want you to know. What was the point of him dying without sharing any of the secrets he knew? Did he manage to protect anything in the end? The person means fish in French. Oh, really? Shock. Shock. Synth is still here. Callus the Unfaithful is still his epithet. And Spina di Rosula is barely getting by. 
Nothing. Did he think I'd just oh. accept his meaningless death and live out my life just as meaninglessly? Nothing has changed. I've never accepted that. Ever. Not since that day. And certainly not now. I want to find out the real answer for everyone's sake. For the missing girls, for the victims, mm. and for myself. Fabia. This is indeed the best moment to act. Your partner appears to be quite reliable. And more importantly, Demoiselle, I think you're also ready to take this on. I think so too. I think I think she's finally consciously ready to go. So you do know something else, Malus. Yes, I do. In fact, even before that banquet, Boss already knew of the connection between Synth and the serial disappearances case. But what drove all the tensions to the boiling point was the revelation that you, Demoiselle, had been selected as the next target to disappear. That's what I said before. I was like, I mean, it doesn't explain why he died, but things kind of boiled down to he knew this was happening and he didn't want it to happen to her. But I guess that doesn't explain why he went to die. All attention to the building, the boiling, the boiling point was the revelation that you've been something to be the next target to disappear. What? <sighs> Boss also didn't tell you that he had been diagnosed with a rare illness. Oh, the doctors why? told him That's that he it. had no more than five years left to live. Malus. And the serial disappearances case caused him great anxiety. Five years was nowhere near enough time to resolve this long-standing conflict. But once he passed away, all the danger would pass on to you. Knowing all of this, he decided to use one final intimidation tactic before his death. He claimed to have already gotten his hands on some key incriminating evidence for the other side, and even told hmm. some members of Spina de Rosula about the details. He kept this near and dear. We lose something out on information? Spill the beans, man. <laughs> like, yeah, she's been trying to figure this out the whole time. I guess maybe now he believes it's, it's the right time. But to have all this info, maybe he didn't know about like what we contributed and now it makes sense to him. But as long as you remain safe, he would not share the evidence with the public. If something were to happen to you, then he and all those he told would immediately expose all they knew about Synth and the disappeared victims. Right, so nobody would be able to get off scot-free. As we've seen, right. Boss's tactic has worked. Even though Boss has been gone for a long time, the other side has not tried to take Demoiselle's life. Well, I mean, kind of did. They slipped the stuff in our water. No. Or Fanta. I don't believe it. He never appeared to look sick to me. No father wants their daughter to see them weak and haggard, especially someone as proud as Boss. To him, dying in a duel and suffering lasting dishonor as the unfaithful was still far preferable than losing face in front of his daughter. Hmm. Now was a character who smiles a lot on the outside, but yeah, yeah, it hurts a lot on the inside. Definitely. <laughs> so he chose to die in silence so that he could protect me. I'm afraid you're not understanding this correctly, Demoiselle. What Boss wanted to hand to you was not a parasol, but a sword. sword. If Boss's spirit could hear you telling me that you want to find the answer for the sake of everyone involved, I'm sure he'd be extremely proud. Uh, that fool. <laughs> Couldn't he have just given it to me straight? No. He might have set up everything no, precisely yeah. because he never thought. I'd be able to understand him. She is just going through it, man. Dang. Poor Navia. Is that the amount of confidence he had in me? And what if I was never able to make it to where I am now? He gave you the choice to live how you want. Yeah. 
I suppose that's true. With the way he'd set things up, if I had wanted, I could have just lived out my life without a care in the world. Hmm. It's a couple perspectives going around. But she uses a claymore. <laughs> it would have been a sword. I guess she made it a bigger sword. But thankfully, he rarely talked to me about complex matters, and thus understood little of me as a person. In this case, he really didn't need to give me an easy way out. Huh. Malus, what was the key evidence that he shared with you? It's the location where Synth is produced. Essentially, it's the enemy's headquarters. When he was threatening the enemy, mm. Boss didn't share the specifics of the incriminating evidence he found. But if you want to use it against the enemy, you'll still have to take several things into consideration. Why? If we know where the place is, can't we just go storming in? No. <laughs> You mustn't forget that we're fighting against a mysterious and dangerous organization that's been in operation for decades. Yeah, so, well, that's your answer. Who made her cry? I just want to talk. Badge. Yeah, this is, a. Uh, it made her cry at least two or three times. There's no telling what might be lying in wait at their headquarters. We also have no idea what kind of evidence we may be able to find inside. Nor what people we may be able to capture. But a single visit to their headquarters would be tantamount to a formal declaration of war. Not if we do it in secret. The worst case would be that we leave empty handed, but also open ourselves up to full retaliation. Then, in that case, why not work with the Fontaine authorities? That'll be even more of a problem. Well, you saw one of them dissolve during Mr. Linney's case. We have no idea just how thoroughly they may have been infiltrated. Gosh, could you imagine if they had like a trap kind of system? Where like they have like sprinklers, like you know when a fire goes off and there's sprinklers and on the ceiling. Imagine if the sprinklers were like they had the dissolving primordial waters in them. Holy. Huh. That's true. Seems my father really had no choice. I think this organization is like extremely talented at what they do. It's not good what they do, but obviously they know what they're doing. But things are different now. It should be a lot easier to prove the other side's guilt now that we've connected Synth with a disappearances case. Hmm. Yeah, that's a mafia. That's yeah. Perfect. You sound like you put a lot of thought into this, Malus. Because he had the info. I am the butler, after all. I live but to serve the boss and demoiselle's will. It's always the butler. It's Alfred. I've always been willing to take on any kind of risk for your sake. But considering my relative lack of ability, I've spent my time keeping secrets, performing basic investigations, and waiting for the right time to come. Hmm. Thank you for all of that, Malus. Have you discovered anything new in the past few years? Can you just any water out here? Not even the water inside of our bodies. True. Let me think. Ugh. One conclusion I came to was that the enemy must be quite familiar with Spina di Rosula, or at least have an informant planted here. Yeah, I definitely has an informant. It's gotta have somebody. Because how did they know we were going back to go eat at the dinner place? Because uh, he definitely has information. When I announced orders to the organization's members on Demoiselle's behalf, I used to deliberately keep a few people in the dark and observe the reactions of the synth vendors. Hmm. If the vendors didn't change their plans, then the individuals informed of our orders must be innocent. If the vendors packed up and fled, however, then someone must have given them the news. After several rounds of testing and investigative tracing, I've narrowed the suspect list down to three people. The first is Florent, Spina de Rosula's senior advisor. I bet him. Yep. Huh? Florent? Yes, surprising, isn't it? He was one of the people Boss trusted the most, which also means that he was someone who understood Boss really well. Spies. 
Thanks to his position within Voss's innermost circle, he always knew our upcoming plans and could thus avoid capture this whole time. There's someone else like him too. Marcel, the head of Confrérie Marcel. of Cabrière. Oh. Glasses? That's him. Yeah. And he's from the Cabrière? Uncle over. Marcel. What is this Confrière? It's a guild in Poisson. The boss helped it to grow to its current size and prominence. In the beginning, they were only reselling some daily goods, but now they're one of the richest guilds around with a lot of business connections in the city. So, mm. they're like a sister organization of Spina di Rosula? Maybe not. Yes, you can say that. When we were fighting against the synth dealers, they provided us with plenty of support. It's a bit difficult to imagine someone using their own money to hunt down themselves. The perfect ploy. The final suspect is Thierry, the man responsible for coordinating information between Spina di Rosula and the guards. Honestly, this guy looks like the other guard uh, in the upper epiclass, so probably, probably is him. Although the guards mostly leave us to our own devices, there are still many activities we have to report to the local authorities. Hmm. Since Thierry is always in the know about our current activities, he could theoretically always plan one step ahead. Look at him. I see. These are all people who I communicate with quite regularly. To think that the enemy we've been fighting against has been right next to me all along, among those I trust the most. It's almost too hard to believe. If you want to investigate them, please take every precaution to not alert the quarry. Judging from our experience, the enemy is extremely cautious. Mm, of course. And Indeed. thank you, Malus. You've provided us with a lot of great information. You're too kind, my lady. I'm just doing my duty. Uh, and before I forget, uh, proving Boss's innocence would also mean clearing him of blame in Jacques' death. Oh, yeah. So you have to, like, clear, clear his name, even though I guess it's kind of too late. After that incident, Jacques' wife and daughter were taken into the Spina's care. They still live in Poisson today. If it might help, you could also pay them a visit. I can make the necessary arrangements. Oh, thank you so much, hmm. Belus. You really are the best. A new case awaits, my dear partner. Leave it to me. I hope we can work together to uncover the truth and end this case once and for all. Ooh, here we go. More, more information. He was going on a rainy day. The big pit goers heard two gunshots at the house. When they reached the scene, Callus had a gun in his hands, and Shaq was shot and slain. Based on the investigations done, uh, there was no possibility that anyone could have done the deed and escaped. And Callus was thus a judge to have been the culprit. So yeah, we've had this book available to us ever since the Act One. So. This is going to have a lot of information in it by the time we're done. If this stays all the way, like, stays relevant all the way up until, like, Act 5, that's going to be awesome. It is settled, then. Please excuse me, and enjoy your conversation at your leisure. Thank you for arranging everything for us, Malus. Excuse me, miss. Do you need anything from us? Kid is mad. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's Adele. Hello. Oh. Hey, Navia's all quiet. This isn't like her at all. Hmm. Let's not bother her for now. I'm sorry that I only came to visit after all this time. After what happened, I didn't know how I was supposed to face the two of you. Ah, if it's about that, there's no need to apologize. After my husband died, Spina di Rosula sent us a lot of mora and support. I understood your guilt and apology to be genuine. But aren't all of those things nothing compared to the loss of Jacques? 
I can understand the kind of pain that comes with losing a father so needlessly. You don't understand at all. I didn't know how to face you, because I didn't know what I could possibly bring as a consolation gift. Hmm. Adele, I'm a time driver. You're gonna be a singer. I know. Only the full truth could bring closure to you. Mm-hmm. Oh. I'm sorry. I appreciate the sentiment, but you don't have to carry all that guilt. On the matter regarding my husband, my daughter and I have more or less found our answer already. Would you mind sharing it with me? I really can't believe that my father could ever bring himself to shoot Jacques. He didn't. I always knew that my husband's money was earned through others' suffering. He told me countless times that if he could turn back the clock, he would never go into the synth business again. Oh, maybe he did. He had many regrets and felt that he took the idea of providing for his family too literally. For the longest time, he thought Mora was everything. So when Mr. Callis came to him with a proposal, he accepted it almost immediately. He tried to be as careful as he could, but even so, he was still found out by the higher-ups. They found out about his betrayal? Dang. Papa didn't say that exactly, but Papa did tell me that I should never be ungrateful. Before he left that day, he told me that he had no choice. It was only later that I realized it was his final farewell to the two of us. Wait, does that mean someone ordered Shaft to take out Callus? I don't know that for sure, but you could say that's the conclusion I eventually came to. Which is why I'm the one who should feel guilty. Callus had always taken great care of us, both when he was still alive and after he passed away. He must have done so to give you a better life. Because everyone, everyone's father is just perishing. Oh, thank you for everything you've told me. I will definitely find the truth. The current state of things is not something I'm willing to just sit back and accept. Thank you. I'm very grateful to hear this from you. Even though your personality is quite different from your father's, mm. your determination when you speak is really similar. You really think so? That's the first time anyone said that to me. Hmm. Testimony from Shaq's family. Shaq's family believes that he had struggled greatly with the order to kill Callus. Holy oh, okay. Did Callus act in self-defense? Or was there more to the incident? Hmm. I'll leave my husband's case to you. Thank you, Miss Spina. And Miss Spina's friend. Dang, I'm loving how this is all like building up within our. Are you okay, Navia? Uh, I'm fine. Don't worry. Let's investigate the three suspects next. Laurent uh, should be nearby, and we should be able to find Thierry and Uncle Marcel in the city. I'll get hmm. myself together on the way, so please don't worry. An emotional roller coaster. But yeah, I like how we're keeping everything in our um in our like record book. Just nice. Greetings, boss. How may I be of assistance today? Hmm. I'm sure you've heard about what happened at the opera house. Someone got turned into water right in front of us. Yeah, I've heard. With something that dramatic, I'm sure journalists will milk it for all it's worth. And it'll be all the talk for the next several weeks. It also reminded me, on the day that the incident happened with my father, it was raining outside, and we found some clothes left at the scene. Yeah. Did you see the spy? Let's evaluate. After my partner here put the dots together for me, I feel like we should try to reopen his case. Can you do me a favor and try to recall what happened that night? Oh, let's hear this. <laughs> Let's see how he relays the information. Hmm. Let me think. Mr. Callis was feeling pretty upbeat that day. So he was drinking and bantering away with us at the table. 
Drinking and bantering away. After that, he told us that he wanted to go get some fresh air. So we let him go without thinking much of it. Who knew that we would hear two gunshots ring out right after? Hmm. Is it going to try to attack who's the culprit among them? <laughs> True. My first reaction was that Mr. Callus's life was in danger. So I grabbed my holster and made a mad dash toward the scene. But when I got there, it was already too late. Mr. Callus was standing over a dead body with a gun in his hands. All mm. we could do was look back and forth at each other, not knowing what to say. So you also remember two gunshots then? Okay. That's that's a, that's a good note. Remembers the two gunshots. Indeed. The guard said that the first shot didn't hit anyone, while the second killed Jacques. But I've never really bought that explanation. Reason being, Mr. Callis had left his gun on the table. I even made sure to confirm that before running to the scene. Okay, well that's huge. But according to the guards, that doesn't mean he couldn't have had other guns on his person. Uh, I kind of believe Lauren so far. About the clothes left at the scene that you mentioned. Do you think there was a third person there who was turned into water? It's very possible. At least from our perspective, my father had no reason to kill. So he would also have no reason to bring an extra gun with him. The gun he was holding probably belonged to Jacques or a third person on the scene. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So you're saying Mr. Callus ended up with the gun because he seized it from one of the other guys? Was Fontaine like that kind of area where like everybody carries guns? You know? Like, I didn't even think, <laughs> think of the same thing. I was like, because everybody had a con uh, concealed pistol license to carry. Yeah. I was like, like, does everybody just have one at home? But, I mean, it definitely seems like it's the one region within Tavat where it's more prevalent but hold on if that's what had happened then why didn't he share the truth with any of us Jax. he didn't even want to face the oratrice machine and chose instead to prove his honor in a duel yeah that's kind of like <sighs> that is kind of shocking not even not even try just go straight to the duel did he lose all faith in the courts after seeing someone dissolve right in front of his eyes? Mm, about that, Malus told me a thing or two. So, I think I can understand why he committed to the duel. I'll tell you everything, once the whole truth has been revealed. Yeah. I understand. Then, I'll leave Mr. Callus's honor in your hands, boss. Hmm. And if I may just say one more thing, the whole... Callus, the unfaithful epithet, has been a thorn in my side since the day it was invented. Many people have laughed at me for still calling him Mr. Callus, even after so many years have passed. But it was Mr. Callus's trust that allowed me to rise through the ranks of Spina di Rosula and live the life I lead today. Okay, I believe Florin so far. He seems legit. No matter what others might say, He'll always be the man I respect the most. And he'll always be my boss. Don't worry. I will definitely find the truth. You and all our other comrades at the Spina deserve to know the truth as well. Okay. Florin, the advisor to Spina de Rosa, claimed that he was very grateful to Callus for his kindness. He was also present at the banquet of the day of the case and can provide evidence that Callus did not carry a gun with him when he went out hmm. my apologies boss for that last sentimental bit it's just many years have passed while I've held my tongue it's not often that I get to share my true feelings with others I believe you sir I believe you Florin yeah I think it's this guy but I haven't talked to him yet though <laughs> It's me. Oh, now, what brings you here, Miss Navia? I've heard that you made quite the name for yourself at the Opera House. Oh, so you've caught news of that already. Mm hmm. Oh, okay. 
Hey, I'm also a member of the guards, you know. The way you make it sound, people would think I was sent off to Poisson because I had done something wrong. Are you sure there isn't a little bit of truth in that? Under normal circumstances, shouldn't you have been called back to the city already? <laughs> I mean, where I work is really up to me. Let's just say I enjoy the ambiance of Poisson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't love this guy. Curry, a spy name if I ever heard of one. <laughs> That's a spy name if I ever heard of him. Callus did a fantastic job running the town. I agree. Building Spina di Rasula from the ground up and clearing many obstructions in my way. It would be next to impossible for me to find a similarly easy but high-paying job in the city. Well, okay. Uh, I don't know. <sighs> anyway, enough chit-chat. Are these two friends of yours? You, uh, here for some formal business? Ah, uh, yes. These two are my partners. What happened at the Opera House made us realize that Linny's case and my father's may be related. We're trying to reinvestigate the details of my father's old case. Ah, oh, I get it. You think there might be more to the case now that we know people can be dissolved into water, right? I was also flabbergasted when I first heard of it. Flabbergasted, huh? If you want to go through the original files from your father's case, I can help you look for them. I don't know. We were looking for a vast sure's case. I was going to say, how do you know how they're there? That'd be much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, actually, I have another question. Do you have the authority to dispatch Gardamex? Of course. Without them, I couldn't possibly handle Poisson on my own. Why do you ask? We definitely can't use them to forcefully get more evidence for your father's case. He always says things that are like, like he's joking, but there's like a real tone to it. Like, surely we can't do this. Like, that's what he, that's kind of how he's speaking. Well, you see, just recently, we were attacked by a horde of unnumbered Gardamex in the city. And you didn't even know. So, <laughs> if you hypothetically wanted to do something against me... All you would need to do is get rid of the Mecha serial numbers and send them after me. Oh, I would never do that. <laughs> then you think too highly of my abilities. Dispatching Mecha is very different from controlling them. If I had to make an analogy, when you order a dish, the chef will make it for you. You can ask the chef to cook, but... Not to massage your shoulders or carry your baggage. I mean, you could. No. If you try to make unreasonable demands, the chef would just think you're out of your mind and ignore you completely. The same goes for me and my Gardamex. Removing a serial number is also not as easy as you might think. There are a lot of complex steps to it, and it's almost impossible to keep it a secret. Hmm. So I can promise you, those mecha were definitely private units. Makes sense. Oh, <laughs> then you're officially in the clear, Thierry. <laughs> well, thank you for the vote of confidence, Navia. That looked like you were not in the clear. <laughs> Jokes aside, I'd like to wish you all the best with your investigation. I'll be staying in the city for a little while, so just come find me if you need any support from the guards. I didn't know we're investigating, huh? No. Information regarding Thierry. Thierry is the person responsible for official contact between Spina de Rosa and the guards. According to him, only sufficiently rich can privately own large numbers of Gardamax. Hello. How may I help you? Oh, it's not you. Okay. I'm here to see Marcel. Could you please let him know? You can just say Navia's looking for him. Okay, I'm already feeling like it's like it's this question. Sure, I will let him know right away. Since we have to request for him, that's already sus. He waited a while. Ah, Navia, hello. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm not as young as I used to be, so my legs are giving out a bit. 
Oh, it's all right, Uncle Marcel. There's no need to stress. I just wanted to talk to you briefly about what happened in the Opera House. I'm sure you saw everything too, right? Yes, uh, I've never seen anything so strange. Oh, you yeah, you have. The Opera House too? That's right. I went there with Navia to see the magic show. Who knew it would turn into a whole murder mystery? Who knew? I also witnessed your marvelous sleuthing work. Quite impressive. To beat the Hydro Archon at her own game on her own turf, I can already imagine everyone in Fontaine discussing your exploits over a few glasses of wine. There you go, Charlotte. You want a story? You got one. Oh, Paimon doesn't want to become the talk of drunkards. <laughs> Apologies. It's just how Fontaine is as a nation. Everyone loves drama and theatrics. True. Uncle Marcel, you've also noticed that other thing, right? The fact that humans can dissolve in water? Yes. I was reminded of your father's case right away. Is that what you're investigating now? He knows too much. Exactly. I still don't have much solid proof, but I can sense that the other side has already begun to act. Oh, and what makes you say that? We were attacked on Araneus by some unnumbered Gardamax. And there was also an attempt to get me to drink water from the Primordial Sea. If not for the vigilance of my partner, I probably wouldn't even be here talking to you right now. Oh, you're giving us too much credit. Wasn't it you who protected us? Hmm. Alas, it seems things are heating up again. The peace that Callus sought so dearly will soon become a thing of the past. The peace that Callus thought so dearly? Hey, what? But rest assured, Navia, Poisson will always remain a safe haven for you. If you're scared, you can always return there. If anyone dares to lay their hands on you there, the Confrérie of Cabriere will use its funds to the last Mora to bring them to justice. Ah, oh, so he was the one from the... Carrier. Thank you, Uncle Marcel. But I don't intend to go into hiding. I'm going to strike while the iron's hot. Do you have any new thoughts on my father's case? Ah, about that. Sorry, my age is catching up with me, so it'll take me a while to recall my memory. That's the second time he said that. The Confrere was responsible for that banquet, so I was out and about the whole time making sure things were running smoothly. I didn't even have the time to drink with the guests. Hmm. Didn't have time to drink. Then I heard the sound of a gunshot, and the rest was history. Oh, it's okay. No need to push yourself. We'll ask around some more. See if there are any valuable clues elsewhere. We're letting them off? Sounds good. Just let me know if you ever need more of. More. All my wealth comes from Callus's patronage and support. I'll spend however much it takes to clear his name. Hmm. Russell was the leader of the Confrere of Cabrier and was the organizer of the bank years prior. The Confrere and Spina de Rosa have always maintained a close working relationship, though his recollection of the events of the case is quite foggy. He's willing to defend. Ah, alas, Abby. why do these kinds of things happen to the kindest people? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I was like, are we going to discuss this in, in the tree? <laughs> Step right up. Uh, here? Oh. We've talked to all three suspects, purely based on their conversations with me. None of them sounded particularly suspicious. None of them really stood out as a suspect. Mm, I, I suppose that's to be expected, though. If a single conversation's all that's needed to find them out, then my father wouldn't have needed to investigate the case for so many years. Anyway, mm. even though we didn't make a breakthrough, let's still compile what we were able to find. Oh, here's where, the book. Where should we start? Shaq's motive. Ah, you're right. Flora mentioned that Callus probably only ended up with the gun because of circumstance. Hmm. That makes sense. According to Jacques's family members, he already told them that he had been discovered and that he had no choice before he left home that day. 
Hmm. If I had to guess, he probably received an order from the synth boss to kill my father. Had he refused, he and his family's lives would have been forfeit. So, Jacques fired the first shot? <gasps> if I was shocked, I wouldn't have fired a shot at all. Uh oh? And why is that? Could he get could he, could he guarantee his safety after killing Callus? Could he guarantee his family's safety after killing Callus? Oh, that's a good point. Jacques probably already knew that he was just being used as a tool for murder. And once he had completed his mission, he'd be of no more use to his boss. Huh. So what would make more sense from his perspective would be to turn his back on the order and seek protection from my father. He's the third person was the one who derailed everything. Who was this third person? Mm -hmm. Makes sense. But without evidence, that's still just a theory. Besides, Jock, the attack from the Gardamex has been bothering me quite a bit as well. It's obvious that our enemy has yeah, become no one more ever... antsy after the secret of the primordial seawater was revealed. I feel like that would have been like a big scenario. Like, people would have been there, guards, and, you know, well, I guess like human guards. But just kind of just kind of happened and then wasn't talked about. Do you think he knew even then that we'd follow this lead to the end? Given everything that's happened since, uh, it's quite possible. But who among the three suspects would have the ability to control privately owned Gardenex? <laughs> oh, oh, thanks. Got a full on pick. All right. I don't think it's Florin at all. What's it be him? Thierry, I'm kind of want to pick the cop, the guard, the cop. But Marcel did have like a foggy, foggy memory. He didn't really know like he didn't really he didn't really know what happened. He was like kind of kind of iffy about it. I kind of do want to go with the, th the second option, but. I go with. I go with. My Thierry, answer. you say? Huh. It is possible that he's figured out a way to convert the Gardamex for personal use. But then again. Uh... But I didn't feel like he was lying when he was talking to us about the Mecca. I also don't think he'd be able to keep that kind of tampering under wraps. Yeah. Had he actually tampered with the Mecca, we'd be able to prove it with a simple check of the guard's inventory. Hmm, yeah. The, I, can't, I feel like it's him because, like, nobody really talked about it, right? If the Mecca uh, were taken from the guards, it should be pretty easy to find out when and how that happened. Maybe it was someone else. Okay, we're going to go through all of them. Flora? Uh, it is true that he was closest to my father and thus had the best chance of learning about his dealings with Jacques. But, as Spina di Rosula's advisor, his work mostly deals with personnel and security, so he shouldn't have much means when it comes to finances. So you're saying Maybe he's he does. too broke to afford a mecha army? Exactly. He can't. And even if he could, I don't think he would be able to dispatch a whole group so quickly. Maybe it was Marcel. Uncle Marcel? Uh, hmm. My father did really trust him. And they worked together on a large number of projects. Maybe that's how he got to know Jacques. Hmm. And with funds from the contrary, he could also afford a large number of Gardamex. This is true, and he was real. We're still missing one last one. You know, if you think everything through, Uncle Marcel is indeed the most suspicious of them all. Could we be missing other suspects? Malus didn't know about the people turning into water thing when he narrowed it down to these three, did he? <sighs> Malus has always been very reliable, and his no, judgment of others' trustworthiness has been fair and well considered. When he laid out his case for the three, the rationale he gave me made a lot of sense as well. The suspect is knowledgeable about the Spina's internal affairs, has the means to dispatch Mecha to assassinate us, and possesses significant intellect and foresight. 
Hmm. And I guess Malusa is fine. Honestly, that would not be too far off, considering he knows he knows everything. Even if I don't want to believe it, I'm starting to see how things could all tie back to Uncle Marcel. He's someone that who's you very close to, after all. Well, we still have another trump card on top of all the theorizing and speculating. The synth production base. Yes. Malus did say that charging straight in there would be extremely risky. But we don't have any other options right now. We need far more solid proof before we can hope to go charging in on our enemy. Hmm. Here you are. Oh. oh. I've been looking for you. It was him. Huh? Aren't you the guy from the guards? Did something happen? Yeah. News came from Arenaeus just after you left. We've got another trial on our hands. Wasn't that place built specifically for holding trials? What's so newsworthy about this one? I know, I know. But they said the person they're putting on trial is a Fatui harbinger called Tartaglia. <laughs> oh, oh, no. What? Is that someone you know? No, I, I don't know who he is. Who's that? A child? What a, what a, what a name. I don't know who that is. Yeah, we know him. God dang it, Maybe even a little too well. Well, he's been accused of being the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case. No, it's child. absurd, don't you think? Yeah, he wouldn't do that, surely. Wait, how? None of our investigations have had anything to do with him. That's what I thought was strange about it, so I came to tell you the news <laughs> right away. <laughs> Every time Tartag was in something, it just makes me laugh. If the charge against him stands, then it'll be next to impossible to get the guards to support any of our planned investigations. Right. Because they'll think they've already found the culprit. Mm. Yeah. And it'll be a lot harder than to clear Mr. Callis's name. Hmm. I understand. <sighs> well, partner, well, this is. What do you think we should do? We still haven't found any conclusive evidence. Well, that was random. I mean, it wasn't random, but like it came out the blue for a second there. Uh, um. Let's no, we never split up. Uh huh. Split up? What do you mean? You can go to the uh, Irnies while I go investigate that place. I'm confident in my combat abilities. <laughs> Just as expected of my partner. All right, Pamon, you go with her. Since this is a trial about the serial disappearances case, the culprit's attention will be focused on Aeneas, leaving his home base wide open. Must blame it on child and call it a day. <laughs> You're right. This is our the best end. opportunity. <laughs> All right, then. Let's do this. I'll install them at the Opera House and charge Marcel as the true culprit. Hmm. I won't have any chance of making that charge stick, though, unless we find more evidence. It'll be up to you to make it back in time and hand the decisive evidence to me. Now we're going to be just like you last time. Leave it to me. We'll help you, just like you helped us in Lenny's trial. Yep. Demoiselle, please allow us to accompany you. I'm ready. Ah, oh, Malou, Silver, when did you two get here? We heard that you'll be leaving Poisson and figured Poisson. that you might require our assistance. It's our hope that your confidence will be bolstered with the two of us by your side. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hmm. Then, let's make haste for Arrhenius. Paimon, Traveler, I'll see you at the Opera House. I hope so. I hope so. So this now is combining the information regarding Garden Max and investigation results so far. It can be concluded that there's only one person who can have a large number of garden mechs in his possession and ruin or and run the synth business without leaving traces. This person is other, none other than child. No, Marcel. I know why they put the bubbles there, like as like a like a sensor, but it just draws my attention to it because it's so abnormal. Domain. Finally found it. Paimon, what? <laughs> that leads to the synth production base you're underwater pipe what do you how uh i guess that fontaine blessing really does do wonders am i am i gonna die in the cutscene it's telepathic surely nadia's probably arguing up a storm right nope. now to stall for us <laughs> oh, 
Well, meanwhile, in the upper uh, Epiclus. Ooh, are we gonna actually? It would appear that I must repeat my question again, Mr. Tartaglia. <laughs> oh, Cass. <laughs> Do you accept the charge that you are the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case? To be perfectly honest, I don't understand your country's complicated court system or the reason why I'm being charged with something I've never even heard of. <laughs> However, I did hear that people who have been charged can choose to participate in a duel to clear their name. Is that right? That's why he's here. In which case, as long as I accept the charge, I can have an all-out fight with that champion duelist, Clorend, right? Child, you are something else. I've got to admit, that's one of the most enticing offers I've ever received. When I privately sparred with her last time, she was obviously holding back. Really oh, clip up here. Well, that's, that's high up, man. Dang. Hey, don't you understand? You're currently the prime suspect for a major case. <laughs> this isn't the place for you to be looking for fights. Oh, it is for him. Oh, sounds like the Hydro Archon wants to lecture me on the ways of the Opera House. All right, child, calm down. Hold on. I know you have a Hydro Vision too, but you don't have it right now. Then why don't you duel me too? I'm the kind of student that learns best in the heat of battle. No, 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 no. That's not what I meant. Hmm. I guess Freena's not a fighter, huh? She's like, uh, no, never mind. You're just scared of him. Alas, it would appear that communication with the well. defendant is going poorly. And we have made very little progress. Hmm. Yeah, Farina's all bark, no bite. In that case, let me explain everything from the very beginning again. The goal of this trial is to determine the culprit behind the serial disappearances case. Hmm. That case had nothing to do with him. You've got the wrong man. They're like, oh my gosh, her again. Huh? What's going on? <sighs> Why is she interjecting again? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it couldn't be one of the Fatui Harbingers. Miss Navia, this is the second time you've interrupted the court proceedings. I only tolerated your behavior last time because you were able to provide the court with a key eyewitness. But that was an exception rather than standard court protocol. I can very well charge you with contempt of court for your interjections. Oh, please. Did you ever think I had any respect for this place's pointless theatrics? I definitely wouldn't know if I were you. We can put that discussion aside for now. I'm not here to argue with you. I'm here to charge the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case. And if my charges prove true, then Tartaglia here will be proven innocent by default, correct? Thing is, he doesn't want to be. Oh, a young lady has charged in and offered to clear my name. How fascinating. Well, I'd gotten half bored to death by all these rules and procedures anyway. Oh, never mind. So I'll take you up on that offer. So, your honor, is there nothing else for me to do now? You may take a seat for now in the audience, but that doesn't mean the suspicions against you have been lifted. <laughs> now then, Miss Navia, who is the person you would like to charge instead? That person is... Oh, okay. Uh, that person is... Marcel. Paimon. I've <laughs> never heard of them in my life. Look at her outfit. Nice. I've heard of them, but weren't they Spina di Rosula's sister organization? You know it. Oh, is this going to be a friends the enemies type situation? There's no standing in the court. Please let me remind you, Miss Navia, that charging someone is an incredibly serious matter. Committing to the charge also means taking on the legal responsibilities associated with it. Hmm. And if the charge fails, depending on the circumstances, you may also be charged with the crime of making a false accusation. Knowing this, do you still wish to charge this man? Tell that to Farina. Yes, I do. In that case, I declare the charge to be valid. Miss Navia and attorneys, please take your places on the court. 
Members of the guards, please contact Mr. Marcel right away so that he may stand trial. It's gonna be, oh, there's no phones, but it's gonna be like Marcel's gonna be like, wait, what? Huh? What? After some time, a shout that confused Marcel is brought to the stands. Mr. Marcel, you will <laughs> not require an attorney. Is that correct? Ah, uh, apologies, sir. It all just happens so quickly. I still haven't <laughs> figured out what's going on. FBI, open up. I think an attorney won't be necessary. This is probably just a misunderstanding between me and Navia. Very well. In that case, since both sides have now arrived, Miss Navia, please present your charges. Court case. I would like to take everyone back to three years ago, to the case of Callus the Unfaithful. Only through elucidating what really happened in that case can we connect all the dots for the serial disappearances case. Navia, do you really think that I was the one who killed your father? Well, not exactly, but... Come on, why would I do that? Callus was my benefactor, and remember both you and I only ran to the scene when we heard the sound of a gun. If that's enough to make me a suspect, wouldn't that make everyone at that banquet a suspect as well? I, uh, I think there's no point in getting into the specifics right now. The audience doesn't even have the big picture yet. Even I'm <clears throat> struggling to remember <laughs> some details of that case. Exactly correct, Your Honor. I must refresh everyone's memory about that case before I can explain my charge and reasoning. I see. In which case, I will recount the findings about that case as originally recorded by Maison Guardianage. Navia versus Nuvelet. On the day of the murder, Spina di Rosula hosted a large banquet in a countryside estate owned by the Confrerie of Cabriere. The banquet. During the banquet, all attending guests heard two gunshots from the courtyard. When the guests arrived at the scene, they found the primary suspect, Callus, holding a gun, while his acquaintance, Jacques, lay dead from a gunshot wound. Hmm. Callus holding a gun, and Shaq was lying down from the gunshot wound. The guard's investigation did not recover any other firearms from the scene. As a result, they concluded that the suspect's first shot must have missed, or well, the second must have taken Jacques's life. The suspect did not dispute this conclusion and also declined to defend himself in court. Instead, he chose to prove his innocence through a duel. Hmm. Didn't even try to. Callus was defeated by champion duelist Clarand in the ensuing duel and soon succumbed to the injuries. These are the known facts about the case. Hmm. This is very... A very good way of doing it, obviously, because like after doing it the first time, it's like, okay, these this is what we know. Now say your piece. These are the known facts about this case. Huh. The one with the motive to kill was Jacques, not my father. And even so, Jacques still had no reason to pull the trigger. Uh, in truth, the third person shot Jacques first and was shot in turn by my father when my father seized the gun from him. I think it is, though. He did have his gun in his hand. After that, the true culprit turned the third person into water, erasing all traces of him from the scene. <clears throat> Thank you for the summary, Your Honor. Of course, the guard's conclusion appeared quite sensible to us at the time. However, we should revisit the case now that we've gained new information about the abilities of water from the primordial sea. Right. It's before we didn't know, so it was just like, huh? Begin. Refutation. So. The banquet. Stay where everything was taking place. That stays true. That didn't change. Yeah, there was no gunshot wound. This assassin first shot Jacques, then turned to shoot Callus, only for Callus to wrestle the gun from him and kill him instead. A pile of clothing was found at the scene. The guards once believed they were used by Jacques, 
as a costume to disguise himself. But now, it is clear that the clothes were proof that there was a third person at the scene. <gasps> and that they were turned into water after committing the murder. Since it was raining that day, the culprit was confident that they could use the rain to wash away all traces of their dissolved accomplice. Hmm. Injustice and silence, since also did not dispute this conclusion, and also declined to defend himself in court and said he chose to prove his innocence through a duel. Oh, he had a motive to kill. Wait. The testimony of the victim's family confirms that Jacques had thoughts of assassinating Callus when he set out for the banquet. However, in the end, he reconsidered and instead shared everything with Callus, hoping to seek the latter's protection. Unfortunately for Jacques, the true culprit had already considered this possibility and had sent out another assassin. Realizing another. this, the true culprit caused the hired assassin to dissolve into water, leading everyone to believe Callus was responsible for Jacques' murder. This is the true version of events. Hmm, that one a lot more information laid into it. Dang, that went to our side by a lot. Ah, so that's what happened. <laughs> Wait, you're telling me something as dangerous as water from the primordial sea has been used for all these years? Yep. What a great theory. It also explains Callus's and Jacques' respective motives. I guess they didn't shoot each other after all. Mr. Marcel, you are the one being charged with the crime. You should provide a rebuttal if you wish to prove your innocence. He's being charged. He's like, you know what? Yeah, that is right. That does make sense. I did it. Ah, but I think I agree with everything Navia just said. In fact, there was nothing in her speech that directly implicated me. True. Uh, then, may I ask some questions? In my opinion, we primarily need to determine two things. One, do you have the evidence to back up your claims? <sighs> I'm afraid not. At least not at this very moment. Boo! <laughs> if you don't have any evidence, you should just go home! Scornful audience member. I may not have the evidence with me, but I know where I could go to collect it. If we look up the deserted clothes against a record of people who went missing around the same time, we should be able to find a match. I like how we are away from the Traveler in this instance, and we're just like, we're just with Navia. Doesn't happen too often. Considering the serial disappearances case, the guards probably kept careful records of all missing persons from around that time, regardless of age or gender. That makes sense to me. Monsieur Nouvellet, I would consider this to be a reasonable investigative direction. Huh. Why do I feel like Farina's acting a little differently today? <laughs> Maybe she's scared of embarrassing herself again? Yeah, and she, she knows her place. Alternatively, she's become more diligent after charging an innocent citizen in the last trial. True. My second question has to do with the ensuing duel. If the truth is indeed as you described. It was him, he did it. Then why didn't Mr. Callus explain himself in court? If he had testified that a person had been dissolved, he could have at least mounted a defense. Well, now that you know this, you can explain. Or Malus can explain. No travel equals no pylon equals full immersion. <laughs> sure. I thought about this too. And the answer is actually pretty simple. He felt there were things that were more important to him. The dissolving power of water from the primordial sea is an important secret for the true culprit of the serial disappearances case. My father could have exposed it for all to see, but he chose to take it to the grave. At that time, Spina di Rosula was in dire straits, and his reputation had already been shattered. He had no guarantee that going forward with the truth would allow the culprit to be brought to justice. There you go, and there you go. What was certain, however, was that it would paint a gigantic target on my back. Yeah. So we had to just take it to the grave. Boss once told me that Demoiselle had already been selected as the next target of the serial disappearances case. 
What? If the secret had gotten out, the culprit would have fought an all-out war with Espina right there and then. I wouldn't have been the only one in danger. All of us would have stood to lose our lives. Of course, the guards might eventually figure out the truth of the matter and determine that we were in the right. But what good would that do? How can a hollow verdict protect mm. anyone? Had this opera house ever given my father any kind of confidence in its brand of justice, Spina di Rosula would have had no reason to exist. True. But by staying silent, we retain the ability to deter our opponents and continue the stalemate. I was able to become Spina di Rosula's president, which made me harder to target, as well as giving me more time to grow and learn. Well, you almost got got. And once I have figured out the truth and stepped up to the challenge, I will do what this opera house cannot and restore my father's truth and honor back to him. So, you mean to say, your father intended to die in the duelist's ring? Yes, sir. Or, ma'am. That's right. Do you have any proof? Of course. All you need is to ask his opponent, Clorand. Look to your left. <laughs> I don't need your apology, your guilt, or your support from the shadows. You don't have to do anything for my sake. But since he entrusted his will to you, Clorand, you should tell us the truth about his sacrifice. Um, so, during the duel, did you believe that Callus was intending to die? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. As a champion duelist, I've fought many battles and taken a countless number of dishonored lives. In my line of work, I've seen all kinds of people give their all for the faintest hope to continue living. Some were determined, others passionate, and some even manic and twisted. How strong are you? Good grief. <laughs> Just one look and I can tell if a duelist is hoping to live or if they're looking to die. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. I hereby swear on my name and honor as a champion duelist that Mr. Callus never intended to leave the ring alive. Oh, okay. I thought she said that he intended to leave the ring alive. She said never. Okay. I was about to say, oh my goodness. <laughs> Since Love that's you. your testimony, I have no more questions. It appears there really are good grounds to reopen this case. I concur. However, Miss Navia, you still have not explained the link between your father's case and the serial disappearances case. Right? What she said was fascinating, but kind of beside the point. Wait, weren't they just talking uh, about the serial disappearances case? Hush, audience. Of course, Your Honor. The two cases are connected via a matter of timing. In my father's case, the culprit intended to kill both Jacques and Callus. As a result, they planned to act after hearing two gunshots. Mm. And at the end of Linny's trial, the culprit also only dissolved the victim in front of everyone because they realized they were at risk of being identified. Yeah, that seems to be their reoccurring theme is hiding the dissolving within other means of water the culprit could only time their actions so precisely if they were already at the scene coincidentally marcel attended both the banquet and the trial so that's why you suspected me <sighs> even after hearing your reasoning i still can't help but find it a little preposterous i'm used to it though you've always been an impulsive and sentimental child navia it's one of your most endearing traits. No need to appeal to pathos. Pathos? I won't try to refute your points one by one, but even if everything you just said was true, can you prove that I was the only person present at both events? On top of that, does a person have to be physically present to control the timing? Can't someone remotely monitor the place? Uh. Hmm, well, I suppose. I know what she can say to that. I know that even with that, you might still think you can reduce the list of suspects with some further investigations until I'm the only one left on the list. Alas, who won't feel at least a little hurt by an accusation of murder from a girl you see as your own daughter? 
But if I were to dismiss this completely, you'd also think I'm not being considerate of your feelings. Ah, well. Let Uncle Marcel teach you another lesson. Uh oh Do you know what the biggest flaw in your reasoning is? I suppose you're gonna tell me anyways. It's timing again. I'm a businessman by trade. From that standpoint, there's no reason for me to kidnap young women. It's a high-risk action with nothing to gain. Mm. In addition, I left my home in Snezhnaya when I was young to come to Poisson and work in some trade. So my you're business not only from Fontaine. When I received Callus's patronage. You're from Snezhnaya. But the disappearances began before I ever stepped foot in Fontaine. Mm, that pretty much clears it. But maybe he was doing it remotely. No. Uh, I do apologize, Demoiselle. This was my mistake. God dang it, Melus. No, it's not your fault. I'm sure he had come prepared. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Would you like to check the date of my first business license against the first known case of the serial disappearances? You can also take a look at my border entry records. Or ask my friends and family when I left Snezhnaya for the first time. Could those records and testimonies do something to appease the unspeakable anguish in your heart? Uh, seems like she got the wrong guy. Mm. At this rate, Nagia will be convicted for falsely accusing him. Uh, he could be lying as well. I mean, he is saying check his ID and stuff, so... I think you've done a superb job of dissecting your father's feelings as he neared the end of his life. But how about we see it, though? Well, show us the proof. But aren't you going against all of his wishes and expectations right now? He wished for you to become more rational, collected, and conscientious, instead of dwelling only on your own feelings. Once you've learned to be more considerate of others' feelings, and to stop rushing headlong into things, you'd have met most of his expectations. This isn't just about me, and it never has been. The biggest difference between me and the rest of the victims is that I still have the ability to search for the truth, while that same agency has long been taken from then. The people whose families were destroyed by synth abuse, the people who lost their loved ones to the serial disappearances, and the people who suffered tragic ends due to their sense of justice. Many people's images are flashing before my eyes. I'm sure some are coming to those of you in the audience as well. That's true. It's a lot of people in this. It's not just Navia. And whose image do you see, Marcel? Is it a man named Vache? Huh. <sighs> Ooh, uh oh. Oh, so you do know that name. <sighs> I'm merely surprised you'd suddenly say the name of someone I've never even heard of. Yeah, sure, buddy. I was waiting for you to say that. Yeah, mm-hmm, get him. No! Oh, wait. About the other mean? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, it was getting good. <laughs> Whoa. Just don't mean? Yep. Underwater domain. Oh, shoot. What's that sound? What is this? Animo block? Oh, I see. Uh... I think we might need some... Some Numa and Osa, maybe? I mean, I don't think so. I don't think it really matters that much. So yeah, these domains are gonna look crazy. Defend! Oh, I actually needed... There you go, I need a Numa. Alright, it's my turn. It's my turn. Go! Oh, okay. Yeah, we're going deep in. It's 
what the it's a brute force these. Yeah, it seems like you can, you can get away with. Oh shoot! You keep an eye out for chests because once you're here, you're probably never gonna be able to come back. Nope. Surprise. Nothing. This place looks awesome. That looks like a something out of like the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Hmm. Oh, I gotta go under. Oh, dang. Oh, we went into rise. This is crazy. This is still a ways away from where we need to go. <sighs> That's like such a little, a cool little feature. What's up, dog? Everyone hold hands. Let's get dogs, but it's only one. Our bond is strong. Immense. That's some pretty good resist resistance interruption. Oh. Hey, use the spotlight. Step on up. Let's go. Why did that turn so much? Go. Huh. How did I get crystallized? I guess I have like geo geo and infused attacks. Oh yeah, yeah, floor 11, Numa damage increase. Characters with Numa increased by 75%. Another twister. Yeah, Hydro MC seems to be able to stay in place for a good while. What'd they say? Pink accessories, a hair tie, a necklace, even a makeup box. There's a name too. Oh, Paimon sees it too, but why are all these cute things labeled with different girls' names? Probably belong to the. Oh. Oh. What is this guy doing, man? This is just like weird. It probably belong to the victims. Huh? Appearances? They were brought here? That's just weird, man. And then they were turned into water. Like what's your goal? What are you what are you trying for? And all the boxes of things. These names. That means Oh, this is terrible. Yeah, Pavan's like, oh this is so cute. Oh, it... oh. The missing person's possessions. You discovered objects with you discovered objects within the containers labeled with the names of those who own them within the depths of the HQ. The names here must have something to do with the victims in the several disappearances case. This proof might be that this was their final stop. Yeah. That is, like, I just gotta know what he's trying to do, man. That's like, oh. Whoa. There's so much synth here. Ooh. So many bottles of ingredients that probably just contain the waters of the primordial sea. There's so many. Hmm. Mixing in progress. Ready to drink. Stock sample? Huh. They've also got all the synth pretty clearly labeled. Whoa, there's even fruit flavored synth? <laughs> God dang. Well, that definitely proves that this is where the, they produce synth, yeah. Synth, a popular potion uh, circulating quite widely. It gives the drinker a very pleasant experience for a short time, but these side effects are equally strong. The producer uses these special characteristics to earn a massive profit from its trade. Yeah, I really are just selling drugs. Dealing. What's this over here? Looks like some kind of place for research. 
Experiment number 16 aims to verify Jacob Ingold's research conclusions on the primordial sea and use his theory as a foundation to achieve a breakthrough. Jacob Ingold. The experiment was a failure. No individual managed to resurface from the water from the primordial sea. Female specimens 22, 23, and 24 were dissolved. I'm on your. I understand this is a dire moment, but I can't make. Sorry, traveler. Paimon will try her best. It's just that Paimon's never read something so scary before. How could someone write something that terrible in such a matter of fact tone? You read the rest. Paimon's too scared to keep going. The goal of the researcher is to save his lover, a woman called. Uh, Vignory was also dissolved. Okay, so Jacob Ingold is just a researcher. Should I get information on, on this? So that's why he did all of these experiments. Wait, did he really think he'd be able to find a way just by dissolving people over and over? That's just insane! Oh no, here's the other name. That's Sheer. Huh? Is it that the name you heard by the fountain? Paimon thought he was an eyewitness in the serial disappearances case. No, he is a researcher. So Vashir is a researcher? <sighs> you mean Vashe is the one who did all of these... Vashe. Uh, experiments? Send off on a bunch of the ex uh, experiment rip reports. The voice I heard from the fountain was probably... Yeah, because she didn't say... She didn't know who she was. Vashe was no victim, but personally took his lover and... No, that's not it either. If that's the case, why would he want people to resurface from the water? There must be more to this man that me... Or, there must be more to this than meets the eye. In any case, Paimon will write it all down. Vashe's experimental records. Experiment number 16 aims to verify Jacob Engel's research conclusions on the primordial sea. And use this theory as a foundation to achieve breakthrough. Hmm. The experiment was a failure. No individual managed to resurface from the water from the primordial sea. Female specimens 22, 23, 24 were dissolved. Why are you only going for young individuals? Let's see what's written here. Nothing escapes Detective Paimon's eyes. Put that mask back on. Navia's father. Oh, this seems to be an investigation report on him. And if we get back to the Opera Epic Plus right now, we got all kinds of information. It's too bad this is a domain, so we can't take any pictures. <laughs> it's probably related to his uh, Shaq's Quest hmm. case. Mm. This should prove the existence of the third person, right? Is there anything else? Hmm. We still have not determined the exact content of the key information Callus has passed on to certain members of his organization. The old dog's a real menace to deal with. Even if he abides by the promise he's made to us, he will still have the upper hand. He can act whenever he wants to make our lives miserable. The only option left is to remove him from the picture entirely. I concur. Let's send someone to kill him. He won't declare war as long as we don't touch Navia. Dang, he had it all figured out. Oh, seems like we've got a bunch of correspondence between the higher-ups. They planned this well in advance. They sure did. Clues concerning that callous, or clues concerning the callous case that were found inside the bookshelf. The mastermind did not believe that Shaq would do this deed, and thus sent a party to ensure Callus's death. The content that followed also defined the culprit's motive to some extent. Oh, look! There's an important-looking basin over here, and it's full of water. Water basin. 
This must be the water from the primordial sea. That means this is where they make all the sin. And that special water is the main ingredient. If you dilute it with normal water, oh. you'll sin. But the pure stuff can dissolve a human. I thought it was like something frozen in place. I didn't realize it was moving. If you dilute it with normal water, you get a synth. But you but if the pure stuff can dissolve a human. Oh, but the pure stuff can dissolve it. Prima will take notes on this incriminating evidence. Primordial seawater pool. The pool found within the ice cube is filled with water from the primordial sea. The mastermind can use this to create a synth and directly use it to dissolve people. So synth kind of turned into a We've whole different thing. We've almost everything here, and it seems like our theories were spot on. But who really is this Vasia? Yeah. Clever, but maybe not clever enough. Let's look again. Sure thing. Paimon won't admit defeat to this guy either. Oh, dang, look at that. It's just black. Oh. It's like a, it's like the abyss. Weird. I found it. Through the diary. Aww. It's just a normal diary chronicling their love story. She was so sweet, too. Oh, Paimon feels even worse for her now. She made a list of baby names. Oh. So that must have been. So many. A whole page is worth. But they're all crossed out. Was she unhappy with all of them? No, those are the people who died. No, I don't know, but if we can read that name, the that'll give us. The name she decided on was Marcel. Marcel. Oh. Wait, but Marcel's pretty old. They must have been old when they died. Has this case been going on for so long that he's Fache and Veneer's grown son? I figured it out. Let's go, Paimon. Hey! Paimon still hasn't figured it out yet. Hmm. No book it belonged to the Lady of uh, Vignore. I don't know her name. <laughs> Vignore. She records many stories about the time with her lover, Basir. On one of the pages, she prepared many names for their future child, and the name she settled on in the end was Marcel. Dang, Marcel had a pretty good defense too, but he didn't have proof though. And whose image do you see, Marcel? He didn't have proof. Is it a man named Vache? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you do know that name. Uh. I'm merely surprised. You'd suddenly say the name of someone I've never even heard of. Mm-hmm. I was waiting for you to say that. Mm-hmm. Nadia, we're back! We got back fast. Uh, as expected of my partner, I just knew you'd return in the nick of time. Just how often do you intend to flout the rules of this court? Eh. It's all right, Monsieur Nervalette. Given their confidence, I expect they've found the crucial evidence. You say you never heard of Vashir. But I have. Oh, well, he wouldn't know about the. Her diary. I mean, that's the evidence, but we're trying to give it to him. Are we? Now, nah, let's just give it this. But the truth of it, Marcel, is that you've always been Vache. Oh. Huh? 
Huh? We've investigated your lair. We already know everything. After your lover, Veneer, was dissolved, you kept abducting young women to experiment on the hopes of bringing her back to you. You even created Marcel as a new identity and destroyed all records of your past as Vache. It's the second person to destroy their own identity. So that's it. Even the villains in opera performances rarely go that far. And with that, Marcel's motive has now been established. Mm. This information regarding your past also dismantles your prior timing defense. True. Well, Marcel, do you know where you went wrong? Ah. Mm, slipping up. You fixated your gaze on the lover that passed away instead of paying attention to the living people around you. So, you never noticed how we changed or how we grew as individuals. You also never understood Boss's real expectations for his daughter. Or our determination to see things through. Your determination. <laughs> No, he's, he's, he's open. He's gone. Mr. Marcel, please speak up now if you would like to defend yourself. Otherwise, the trial will move on to the next stage. Do you think... Do you really think I wanted to do any of this? Dude, you're done. Look at it. Pay attention to you? <laughs> what for? Have you ever paid attention to me? Ever empathized with my pain? Ever known how it feels to watch the love of your life dissolve right in front of your eyes? No one helped me. No one even believed me. All those decades ago, even the officers from the Maison Guardianage were laughing at me. They said there's no way a human being can turn into water. So I must have gone mad from grief. Vigneur's death was brushed away by all of you as if it didn't matter at all. Hmm... Mm. Well, now you know, don't you? Ha! Well, it's too late now. All those who were dissolved are gone forever. You only have yourselves to blame. You set up this ornate opera house in pursuit of your so-called justice. Your beloved drama. While turning a blind eye to the suffering of the people. Vigneur is dead! Mm. We promised each other that we would always be together. Wherever she goes, I will follow. So what you want to do? You want to walk outside of the opera and there's a fountain right outside? She's right there. But I'm not from this blasted place. So I can't be dissolved. No matter what I do. Is that a gun? Oh. <gasps> I can't dissolve! Can't dissolve! Can't dissolve! <laughs> Do you all see? I can't go! I can't follow! So if I can't go where she is, what choice do I have but to try to bring her back? By... killing other people? I did all of that. And in the end, that accursed callus still got the better of me. I spent my entire life living on pins and needles only to get stabbed by his idiot daughter at the very end whoa what <laughs> calm down the suspect is exhibiting signs of mental distress guards please restrain him don't touch me don't anybody come near me i still need to save him yeah her promise we made a promise then yeah then yeah Please, then, yeah. You don't think badly of me. All I want to do is fulfill our promise. I kind of see where he's coming from, from like the nobody listened to him. At this point, the verdict of this trial is clear. With Mr. Marcel's conviction, the charges against Mr. Tartaglia no longer have any basis. Fine by me. I was in a bad mood, but after a show like that, I'm actually feeling pretty good. <laughs> Traveler. Please submit all the evidence you have collected to the guards, so that I might review and summarize the truth behind the serial disappearances case. You will receive a review and compile all evidence and records. The man now known as Marcel was originally named Varche, 
and worked as an adventurer with his partner and lover, Vignier. During an underwater expedition, Vignier accidentally came into contact with water from the Primordial Sea and was dissolved in front of Varche as a result. Hmm. Hmm. Underwater expedition, huh? Vache learned of the primordial water's existence through the work of others and began to kidnap young women for research with the goal of discovering a method to restore Vignier back to life. To cover his tracks, he invented the new alias of Marcel and began to operate a business in Poisson. During the course of his research, Vache discovered that a diluted concoction of water from the primordial sea can induce feelings of euphoria and began to manufacture and market synth. Okay. However, as he accumulated wealth to fund his continued research and expanded the scope, he came into conflict with Spina di Rasula. After exchanging blows with Spina di Rasula for many years, Varche decided to assassinate their president, Callus, at a banquet. Although the assassination did not go as Varche expected, he was able to turn Callus into the murder suspect by dissolving the assassin he sent to the scene. Mmm, to the assassin that was sent. And just recently, Varche attempted to frame Linny as the culprit of the serial disappearances case using a similar method. Mm. However, his attempt to frame Linny failed, and the power of water from the primordial sea became public knowledge. This case also exposed enough of Varche's machinations that he was eventually successfully charged in court. Thus concludes the enigmatic history of the serial disappearances case, with the truth revealed to all. Wow. Dang, man. These Archon quests are just like literally sitting down watching like a detective show. The Oratrice will now deliver the final verdict regarding the charges against Mr. Vache. Star Rail. We're we gonna get. And we lost. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Mr. Varche is. If he says. If he doesn't say guilty. Guilty. Okay. <laughs> Away. It rhymes. Good. Oh. It's what he deserves. That still doesn't uh, give us back all those people. Uh, with that, the serial disappearances case is over now. <laughs> One star, Marcel. We really just witnessed history. Who would have thought the true culprit would be such a polite and well-spoken guy? I love this echo. He's hurt so many innocent people and now he's finally getting what he deserves. Huh? Are you okay? Oh, yeah. <sighs> Demoiselle, you were absolutely brilliant. The day our late boss had always hoped for has finally come. You can rest easy now, knowing justice has been served. Well. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. It's finally over. It's all thanks to you guys. And my partner. See, Papa? Spina di Rosula still doing well with me at the helm. Well now, hasn't this been a most delicious piece of drama? The villain has been caught, justice has been served, past wrongs have been righted, and it's a big ol' happy ending. Yeah. Since it's been such a great show, I'll just let the false accusations against me slide. Either way, I've still got some business to attend to. So, if you'll excuse me... Please wait just one moment, Mr. Tartaglia. Uh, what now? None of this has anything to do with me. <laughs> According to court protocol, since this trial was initiated due to a charge against you, a verdict must also be made regarding the initial charge before the trial can conclude. No. Oh, come on. Is this really necessary? Haven't you already caught the real criminal? Isn't it time for side characters like me to exit stage left? 
Side characters. Please respect the laws of Fontaine. This has always been the rule. All right, all right, but this sure is a lot of hassle. All I need to do is stand over there, right? Let's just get this over with. Hmm. Through evidence presented in the public trial that was just held, it has been established that Mr. Tartaglia has no direct connection to the serial disappearances case. The guilty party has been identified, and thus it is logical to suppose Mr. Tartaglia is innocent of the charges. We now turn to the oratrice mechanique d'analyse cardinale to render the final verdict on the charges. Mechanique d'analyse cardinale. Hmm. Ray Chase, the absolute Giga Chan. According to the judgment of the oratrice mechanique d'analyse cardinale, Mr. Tartaglia is guilty. guilty. Of what, though? Hey, hey! That's not funny! Didn't you just say I'm supposed to be innocent? The disappearances? What's with this verdict? Is your justice machine malfunctioning? Huh? This has never happened before. The Oratrice actually returned a different verdict from the Chief Justice. I mean, have you ever heard of an innocent Fatui Harbinger? <laughs> Do you think the Oratrice might I have just convicted point. him on general principle? So, uh, uh, Fatui? Oh, yeah, he's guilty. But weren't the charges about the serial disappearances case? No matter what else he's guilty of, it shouldn't affect the verdict in this case, right? So, I was clear guilty by that oratrice. Just what's going on here? The judgment of the oratrice mechanique d'analyse cardinale is, by law, the final verdict of the court. We must accept the guilty verdict. Oh, this is where the conflict starts. Guards, please take the suspect into custody per court protocol. All right, now I'm totally with child here. No, oh, this is this is it. This is it. So this That's is music. how justice is done in Fontaine. What He's a back. joke! You've got your rules. <laughs> well, I've got mine too. Let's go. Ooh. Electro! Rip time. Oh, gosh. This is going full foul legacy? <laughs> Oh. Child. I am sorry. If you have been wronged, we will find the truth. But the rules of the court must be upheld. What did you do to him? Had blood on his face? What did he do? Hey, Monsieur Nouvellet, what's going on? Shouldn't they have been cleared already? Well, that was awesome, yeah. Holy. Oh, I traced the detect so much sins and chat. <laughs> he just like took all the bad things he did and said, yeah, it was him. Dang, man. It broke out one piece. <laughs> that was actually insane. Dang, new lit really just kind of put a stop to him, huh? But I'm totally with y'all there. Like, that's just, that's messed up, man. That's like, that's like if AI were to judge people in court. Like, it would be a mess. Apologies. This is also the first time I've encountered such a situation. However, according to the rules established at the conception of Fontaine's court system, the oratrice's judgment is the final verdict of the court. Yeah. That's like AI court. All I do is follow court procedure. As for why the oratrice arrived at the conclusion it did, you should probably ask someone more knowledgeable than me. Child lost the 50-50. Even the, the Chief Justice didn't know. Uh, then we have Nunchess with the Axe Archon herself. Oh, the thing we were trying to do when we got here? Uh, why are you looking at me? I had nothing to do with it! Frida is like, 
doesn't even want to be here. I, I don't know what happened there either. Hey, stop staring at me! <laughs> I love the voice. What does Lady Farina mean by that? She says she has no idea either, but that's impossible. Didn't she create the Oratrice herself? Your voice had to have killed it. It's like, it's just so expressive. Yeah, so are the verdicts reliable or not? Can results like this really be called justice? <laughs> Zero confidence. Ahem. My dearest citizens, did you really think we'd allow an incorrect verdict to be handed out in this court? Why are you always lying? Did you really believe that the judgment could be mistaken or be the result of some sort of random mishap? This hap? Don't tell me. You thought even I had been blindsided by the Oratrice's result. Frina is a mess. But the way she looked just now, it was pretty obvious she had no idea what was going on. However, given the state of things, I shall give you an explanation. Everything that just took place, including my supposed shock and bafflement, was a part of an elaborate performance. Oh, Every really? Action meant to stir up drama and excitement. Oh, that's what it was. And, <laughs> of course, for every performance, there is a script. Everything has unfolded exactly as I expected from the very beginning. As the embodiment of the very concept of justice, the oratrice shall never render an arbitrary judgment. Oh, really? If you thought Child had nothing to do with the serial disappearances case, it is only because you've been blinded by the superficial appearance of innocence. Somebody's gonna get free in one of these days. Everything he's done, not to mention the danger he poses, are beyond ordinary comprehension and completely unforgivable! All shall be revealed in time. You will come to understand my noble intentions, as well as the absolute correctness of the Oratrice's verdict. <laughs> now, having said that, although I, I cannot to leave things hanging in suspense, it is now time for this performance to end. As the lead actress, I shall be the first to take my leave. Toodaloo! There it is, the toodaloo again. So she chose to make her escape after all, did she? It's always lying. Uh, so you're saying we shouldn't put much stock into what she just said? Yes. Hmm. She probably just put on that performance to save face. As for the truth, it's unlikely that she actually has any idea. Yeah, she doesn't. Wait to pull out the rough money. No, I mean, he's right. However, please be assured that I will continue to investigate this case in a personal capacity. Just as I promised, if the judgment has been incorrect, we will do our utmost to clear his name. So he just blurts things out and goes with it. All right. Even though we feel pretty badly for him, we'll take your word for it for now. After all, he's done plenty of bad stuff. So he should have known he'd go to prison someday, right? Well, I mean, it's true, but not for this. An attitude like this, you can't be a DPS. It doesn't fit. <laughs> yeah. Neelu. I wasn't Neelu. Leave the Opera House. Oh, we gotta get a fire photo with Nivellet. Oh, fucking up the camera. Noise. Yeah, Nouvellet knows how she is, pretty much. Oh, Monsieur Nouvellet! That power you showed when you took him down. Who are you really? Mm, he's not gonna spell that, mm. yeah. I'm the Chief Justice of Fontaine, of course. If officers of the law lack the strength and capability to enforce it, then it makes a mockery of justice. Mm hmm... Hey, what are you doing? Quick, stop him! Uh-oh. Traveler! Hey! Traveler! Don't touch me. Ah, Marcel! What are you doing over here? What are you doing? Ugh. Stop resisting arrest! 
Cease, or we'll add another charge to the list. No, 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 wait. I, I just want to ask the traveler <laughs> something. I'm not looking to run away. Please, please, just let me ask this one small thing. Go on. Thank you. Thank you. Spill it. I was being led away when I finally realized something. Where did you first hear the name Vache? I erased all records of that name. So, unless... Are you still trying to prove your innocence? Give it up. You've already been convicted. Yes, I met her. Uh, really? You, you did? You're sure? You met her? But how could that be? How did you manage to do it? I told you, it was in around the fountain, the, the fountain of uh, Lucene. The fountain of Lucene? Then, then she's been so close to me all along. And I just never... Please, please give me a chance to talk to her again. Just let the traveler take you me cannot to the leave the court. see her one last time. This is the last request I'll ever make in my life. You can do whatever you want to me afterwards. I don't care. What? Give an inch and you want to take a mile? Do you think serial killers get to make requests like that? Hmm. Paimon agrees. Why should we give him what he wants when he's only done a ton of super terrible things? Also, if I should have said no, or uh, the girl said no, I don't want to see him again. So if this is a good timing for Cappuccino or Cappuccino to show up the fighting child who has lots of teeth. Oh yeah, it could be, actually. This request, is it worth as much to you as your life? Of course! Wait, no. It's worth even more than my life. Humans, will they betray the instinct to live just to satisfy spiritual needs? Yes. Very well. I will grant your request. Your Honor, I fear that... I will go with him. You do not need to worry about any escape. In that case, I shall leave him in your most capable hands, Chief Justice. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. You don't deserve it, but uh, I guess. Is this the place? You said she's here, but what do I need to do to see her? Dream. Your word, uh, Monsieur Nouvelle, you sound like... It sounds like you're not human. Yeah, definitely sounds like a... Or it definitely looks like some kind of bishop dragon. Back then, I drank water from the primordial sea. It heightened my sensitivity to hydro element. But so did he, though. Yeah, and even Paimon could hear her after drinking that thing. Didn't you just drink a lot of it on the stage as well? Oh, in that case, Vache. He heard it. Ah. <gasps> yes, that's it. So you heard it too. Vinier, it's me. It's me, Vache. Vache? Vache? I'm here! I'm here! Where are you, Vinier? I'm coming for you! I'm finally here for you! What are you gonna do? Like, just jump in the water? Hey, wait! Be careful! Hey, what? Vinier, is that you? <laughs> it's me, Vache! I Vinier. thought he was... I thought he was swimming like that! I thought he was swimming in that animation! Maybe he was like walking and it did they want to look like he was swimming? I don't know. But that I was like, what's going on? Vache, why did you come? Didn't I say you don't need <laughs> to look for me? Is this supposed to be water? You you look a lot older than I remember. How long has it been? Okay, now it looks like he's just standing. It's been more than 20 years i've suffered for over 20 years since the day you left all this time only the thought of bringing you back has kept me alive nothing else mattered to me oh, i must be dreaming who would have thought i'd get the chance to tell you all of my feelings like this vignier you are my everything i really don't know how i could live without you but Vache, if you ask me, this world would be better off without you. True. What are you saying? If not for you, I would have finished my law degree and probably become a top-tier attorney one day. Dang. If not for you, I would have continued to pursue my love of the arts, and my works would have been displayed in the Palais Mermonia itself. 
If not for you, I would at least have been able to take care of my mother. And she would not have grown old and died alone with nothing but the tears on her cheeks. Dang. It's all because of your selfishness, Vashe. It's all because of you. Like she said, an assassin from our homeland. You. Wait, you are not Vignere. Who are you? You're right. I am not Vignere. I am the sacrifices. <gasps> Every woman who died by your hand, as our bodies dissolved, our consciousnesses flowed back to the primordial sea. Our thoughts circulated endlessly within the primordial sea, and we were no longer individuals, but we became one, just as streams of water come together in the sea. Dang, so they all their consciousness all come together? I love how the music changed in that moment. I'm Cressy. I'm Lemony. I'm Azine. The only one I am not is Vignere. Dang, even further. Why? But then, where is Vignere? She doesn't want to see you anymore. Every tendril of her consciousness is avoiding you. This is what you get for your selfishness. Your selfishness robbed us of our lives and our futures. You said time and time again that you'd do any and everything for her. But did you ever consider whether she'd want to see you do the things that you did? If she would despise you for what you became? True. I, um, I... You are a liar, a heartless murderer, and a cowardly narcissist. The only thing you are not is Vignere's beloved. Dang. From the moment your first victim died and her consciousness merged with Vignere's, she has had nothing but pure hatred for you. So imagine when that just kept happening over and over again. Looks like I didn't meet Vinaigrette back then. Or back then either. It must have wanted me to lure Marcel here from the very beginning. No. Yeah. She can't hate me. Let me see her. Please. Have mercy. You still don't understand. When I said don't look for me, that came from the real Vignere. Oh. She really doesn't want to see you anymore. But on top of that, she also said that because... It's her final drop of pity for you. She said that because she knew that if you did come here, we will show no mercy to you. Can they harm him? Like harm him in the state? Vashe. 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 Look what you did. Oh. Later, guards found the culprit of the serial disappearance of a young woman case. Marcel appeared to have lost his mind. Several days later. That's what she get. Marcel. If that's even your real name. It's not. Finally, we have some time to do shopping. Gosh, it's really been a long time since we've been able to relax. It's also raining again. Shopping is stressful in its own way, though. My legs are killing me. Huh. Well met, partner. I knew something great was going to happen when I woke up in such a good mood today. Hmm. Yeah, well, this is not lonely, huh? Yeah. Even this weather can't put a damper on the demoiselle's mood. It's a pleasure to see you both again. Oh, hey, Namia! It's been a few days. Paimon's already started to miss you. Hmm. Oh, he died in the end? That like went too fast. Oh, okay, his soul got yoinked. Oh, yeah, I imagined, yeah, you had to... She said, drown. <laughs> yeah, I said take a screenshot of the text. His soul got yoinked. 
Well, I don't know. I don't want him to, to just sit in jail the rest of his life, or I guess she got the gap revenge, so that was good. Oh, now that I believe. I'm easy to work with and always bring home the bacon. Who wouldn't treasure having a partner like me? Yeah, I mean, it was rightly deserved. Like, uh, that, was, that was messed up. <laughs> Sounds like you're really enjoying life these days, Navia. What have you been busy with since the trial? It can't really come back to that, and that was not the way to do it. Ugh, it's just been one thing after the other. I've been making non-stop trips between Poisson and the court since then. Everyone from Spina di Rosula organized a memorial for my father. We never held a memorial when he first died, since everyone knew that even if we held one back then, no one was no going one to come. Gonna come. Oh, dang. This time, though, everyone in Poisson, and even many people from the court all attended. Because now they understand. Ah, so his name's definitely been cleared now. That's what we like to hear. Watch him like, come back to life somehow. It's been the dearest wish of Demoiselle all along. <laughs> that blasted stubborn fool. I was right to put my faith in him. I'm so glad I didn't give up on the case all those years ago. Thanks for that as well as they could have. Well. Oh, by the way, I ran into Charlotte just after I left the memorial service. Uh, well, maybe it'd be more accurate to say I knew she would be there, and there was no way she'd just let me go. Huh? So you know Charlotte too? The Charlotte? Journalist from the Steamberg? Yeah, way Big back C. when I first became the president of the Spina di Rosula, she was all over me. Wouldn't take no for an answer. <laughs> I believe the story was called The True Heart of Darkness, Secret Tales of the Yellow Rose. To be fair though, it was a really flattering feature. <laughs> so we've been on pretty good terms ever since. That's nice. She was trying to lean on our friendship to get me to do an exclusive piece on the serial disappearances case. Oh, yeah. She told us about that. She's always been super interested in that case, so now her wish has finally come true, too. Anyway, I told her to make sure that when she writes about you guys entering the opera house with the critical evidence, that you both sound really cool. Yeah, cause Charlotte has a insane amount of things to write about after all that. <gasps> with the pen for sure oh and in other news i also took clarand out for a meal oh oh are you two on better terms now mm. while you were investigating vache's headquarters clarand gave testimony on my father's behalf it was thanks to her that we were able to turn the tide i wanted to thank her i mean <laughs> there's also no point in being awkward all the time so we yeah. took a chance to reconcile with each other. Turns out we hit it off. Oh, that's great. Paimon also thought Clarend wasn't actually a bad person. It's always good to have more friends. Anyway, now that the case has finally been solved, perhaps it will slowly begin to fade from the public consciousness. Oh, actually, there's still one last thing I need to do. Maybe Spina de Rosa will get more income too. What is it? Off of like, because the citizens give them money. I should pay a visit to my father's grave and tell him the truth of what happened, as well as how it all ended. And on top of that, just how much people still look up to him to this day. That includes me, too. Miss Navia. Indeed. Can I come too? Mm -hmm. We want to go too. We also think Callus is a really admirable person. Sure thing. I'd like you two to share the moment with me. After all, without you, there might not have been such a positive ending. And yeah. in that case, everyone, let's be off. Considering the recent weather, we'll be lucky if we can reach Poisson before dark. Yeah, you're right. It's been raining non-stop for a few days now. The dragon's crying. Are we actually gonna go, or is it just over? Okay. This is where my father's grave is. Hmm. To be perfectly honest, even I haven't been back here for a long time. Huh? There's someone there already. Wait. That figure. It can't be. 
Miss Nouvellet. Hmm? Isn't that Nouvellet? Why would the Chief Justice be here? Huh? Because it's raining. He's crying. I don't know about Charlotte with pins. She has the same brain cells with she has the same brain cells with Sido. Oh, day. My apologies. I should have asked before coming to pay my respects. Don't say that. Sorry about that. Oh, uh, I was trying to say there's no need for you to apologize. I wanted to show my father how much I've grown, but still. I doubt I've grown to the point that even the Chief Justice would feel compelled to apologize to me over and over. In that case, I will stop apologizing for now. <laughs> hmm. You really could use some pointers on understanding human emotions, Monsieur Nervillet. She is not a human, that's why. In any case, why did you come to Poisson? Hmm. Well, ever since that day, I've been turning a question over and over in my head. Just what is justice, anyway? There was once a time when I didn't want to believe that there could be anything more important to humans than life itself. Oh, rather than that, it's probably more truthful to say I didn't believe humans were capable of resisting the most basic instinct of living things. That they could rebel against their own nature, or consider certain things to be more important than their own lives. Which is also why I didn't stop your father from beginning that fateful duel. Hmm. I see one to see if he could win is to live. I believe that a truly innocent man would never throw away his life like that. That there was nothing, should have been nothing more important than one's own continued survival. But Mr. Callus proved me utterly and decisively wrong. If not for his sacrifice, the serial disappearances case would have remained unsolved to this day. Mr. Callus made the choice he did for mm. his daughter, for his associates, and for many people completely unrelated to him. He's learning. And in the end, from a certain perspective, one could say that he did it all for the sake of justice. A justice that's higher than life itself. So, you asked me why I came here. I just wanted to say my apologies to Mr. Callis in person. I should have noticed all of this much sooner. This regret has filled me with a sadness that has haunted me for days. Really? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why it's been raining for days. That high and mighty chair in the opera Epicles indeed insulates one from many important things. Spina di Rosula. Thank you so much for your hard work and perseverance. Uh, I'm sorry for being mad at you before. So, you're actually one of those types that's cold on the outside, but pretty thoughtful on the inside, huh? That reminds me of Silver, one of my guys. Sorry about that. Self-expression is not one of my <laughs> strong suits. Nope. <sighs> Didn't I just say you don't need to apologize? Ah, so Navia and Nervalet seem to have made their peace as well. I mean, I imagine a lot of people are going to make their peace with Navia at this point. They've all had everything wrong for so many years. Let's not disturb them for now. We can wait till after they're done. Following Navia and Nervalet, you also pay your respects to Callus. So, Navia, <sighs> you know the Devon. <laughs> never paid respects at someone's grave before. Uh, did Paimon do anything rude there? Well, you're not usually supposed to fly around someone's grave. Dang. I mean. Huh? Well, Paimon didn't know that was a thing? But, but Paimon doesn't know what she would do if she can't fly. Oh, no. Paimon hopes Miss Navia won't be too mad. How are we joking about this right now? What's going what? <laughs> This is not the time for jokes. Anyway, Nervalette is still standing around there. It's not often that we can catch him alone like this, so why don't we go talk to him for a bit? If we can't talk to Lady Farina, we can at least talk to him, right? You mean? Really sorry, Navia, but Paimon didn't 
said something pretty disrespectful just now. Oh my goodness. Uh, what are you saying, Paimon? I don't think I get it. Well, aren't you not supposed to fly around someone's grave? Huh? <laughs> Who told you that? Hey, traveler! <laughs> like I said, this is Paimon again! Look, I was just went, who told you that? By my goes. <laughs> who told you that? Well, it's not the not the most happiest of pictures, but Well she's smiling too. Well, what do you have to say? Oh, it's you two. Did Miss Navia invite you to come pay your respects to her father? Mm hmm We ran into Navia on the streets today, so we just followed her here. I see, I see. Then is there something that I can help you with? Uh, um, well, it's pretty hard to run into you like this since you're usually super busy. So we figured we could try to ask you a few questions, if that's okay. Please feel free. Though outsiders, you helped us solve one of the greatest mysteries in Fontaine, and it would be my pleasure to return the favor. No. So this is this is it, yeah. The questions. Alright, about water from the primordial sea. So at court, the bad guys referred to that special water as water from the primordial sea, but what is it really? Truthfully, that name is already quite accurate. I can only surmise that Vache and his ilk only learned of its nature and existence after extensive research. There used to be a special sea on the surface of this planet. The nature of its seawater was rather different from that of the sea we know today. Most of Tevat's life forms were first born in that special sea. You could say it nurtured much of the life on this planet. Mm. Huh. So it really was where everything began. It makes sense to call it Primordial, then. Yep. But today, the Primordial Sea no longer exists on the planet's surface. What Vashe discovered must have been some kind of special case, or a remnant from a truly ancient age. About Natlan, my next stop on my journey. Huh. So that's how it is. Moving on. Oh, you really know everything, Monsieur Nervalette. But... If that's the case, then why would people, uh, at least people from Fontaine, dissolve in that kind of water? Indeed. Why would the primordial sea, which was known to engender and nurture life, suddenly reverse itself and devour life instead? To be frank, that also doesn't match my understanding of this world and its laws. There must still mm -hmm. be some unknown secrets around the people of this land. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me about? There must be. Yeah, that is that is that is odd. That is supposed to nurture life, and it's doing the complete opposite. About the prophecy that has been circulating around the fountain. That the sea levels will rise and everyone will be dissolved in water, leaving Farina crying alone on her throne, but the sins <laughs> of the people will be finally washed away for good. Yep, you nailed it. Does that appropriately summarize the version you've heard? Yes. That's right. It was Lenny that told us back then. And that about covers all the main points. Yes, up to the present, I think we reached a point where we have no choice but to confront this prophecy directly. That's our next case. Rumors have it that this prophecy is rooted in the last words the former Hydro Archon left to the world before she passed away. A prophecy? Of the former Hydro Archon? Wow. This is the first time that we've ever heard of it. Two parts of the prophecy have already proven correct. The rising sea levels and the ability of the people of Fontaine to be dissolved. We should be more vigilant and stay on the watch for further signs. Speaking of the prophecy, Farina has also always taken it quite seriously. Indeed, she has been collecting information and intelligence from across Tevat for this purpose. I mean, I would be too if I was her, especially if I'm going to be the one that left. If the rumors were true, then perhaps this prophecy is the conundrum left to Farina by her predecessor. But with Farina being the way she is, can we really trust her to solve it? <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to ask me about? 
Oh, that was a no. About tiled. My apologies. My investigation has still not reached its conclusion. However, I still believe the judgment of the oratrice was not rendered arbitrarily. <gasps> but you also said you thought he was innocent. For many years, I have been quite aware that the oratrice does not simply mechanically repeat the verdict that I give on each case. As a yeah. divinely created mechanism, the people's unified faith in the concept of justice is integrated into it. Not only can it produce the incredible power of indemnitium, but it likely also possesses other traits, such as self-awareness. Which is all to say, I have been prepared for a situation like this for a long time. It doesn't seem like you were. <laughs> so when Lenny told us that he heard a human voice from the room where the Oratrice's core is stored... I was not aware such a thing had occurred. Perhaps that could serve to prove my conjecture. I will add that to the list of items to investigate. Mm -hmm. In any case, I am inclined to believe that the Oratrice does have a methodology all its own. We just do not have enough information. Mm. Based on Farina's reaction, I doubt even she had any idea what was going on. She never she does. She managed to bluff her way through it, though. The time-tested twin tricks of bravado and drama. While we do intend to get to the bottom of this, for now, we regret to say that the Fatui Harbinger will just have to bide his time in the Fortress of Meripede. Dang. <laughs> Sorry, child. If we did incorrectly convict him of crimes he did not commit, we will most certainly compensate him to the fullest extent allowed by the law. If you ask Paimon, the only compensation he'll want is a no-holds-barred fight with you. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I'm surprised he, uh, he actually ended up having to go. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me about? And the answer we've all been waiting for about my sibling. Your sibling? Another blonde haired traveler. I'm sorry, but I've never seen anyone who matches that description. If he ever stepped foot in Fontaine, I'm sure he followed our laws to the letter and had no reason to appear on the stage of the opera Epicles. Turns out Ether just never went to Fontaine. He just he just went right, right on in that land. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me about? Wow, man. We are never... We are never gonna get it, huh? <laughs> very well. It was my honor to provide you with what answers I could. I very much enjoyed conversing with you. It will soon be time for me to leave this blissful tranquility behind and return to Palais Memonia. Palais. You Super busy, Monsieur Nervalet. Paimon thought you only came here to pay your respects today because you had the day off. Crime and villainy do not have the day off, and so justice must work around the clock as well. This is merely the nature of a justice's work. True. All right, all right, you've got a point. Huh? Paimon just noticed that the rain has stopped. Oh, and there it is. There it is. Steambird interview. Wait, is that like a little ending? Hmm, like an epilogue? Well, that was great. That was like, honestly, it just felt like a... I just sat down and watched like an episode of... C CSI investigation or some kind of like court case, judge, ju judge, jury, something like that, you know, but it was Genshin. So <laughs> I don't care about the destination, I care about the, the journey. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. That is like the more interesting part. But it's, it's just so funny how everybody's like, your brother? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, it's not too late, Celestia. That, that could maybe come into play uh, in a later Archon Quest, or Celestia could be the the late focus. Like, usually we have, like, you know, the early stages of the, of the of the patch, and then, like, the later stages, something else happens that's big. Or maybe, maybe we get, a, like, a Traveler chapter, and it actually has to do with Celestia. We get the Archon quest, we get interlude quest, we get 
traveler quest, and then we get like some sort of second story quest yeah. from the Archon. Yeah. My name's quite funny. Marcel got <laughs> got you faded. Yeah. yeah, he sure did. Marcel was like, yeah, I don't know. There's this, there's no winning for a scenario. I did kind of feel for him a little bit when he was saying how people didn't believe him at first, how everybody was disappearing and nobody wanted to believe him. That's kind of understandable. But the outcome, no. That's not what you do to try and figure it out. Nubla is definitely some sort of Vishap or, yeah, the Hydra Dragon for sure. Absolutely. He doesn't understand how humans work. He doesn't know how to, like, understand emotions, at least for the most part. And it's been raining every day. He's been quote unquote sad. But yeah, holy, uh, holy sad for Navia. That was like rough for most of that Archon quest was all just her dealing with all the bad stuff. She was just going through the motions the entire time, but I'm glad she got some kind of resolve. And there you go. Act two. Another gameplay motor function. Hmm. Unlock new gameplay mode. New gameplay mode? What? But yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. I guess like if you if you want to go back and compare a little bit. I don't know. I mean, I, I can see kind of Fontaine people being like, you know, oh, we, we just had a, a case and, and that was the whole, you know, quest. But honestly, you know, I think it was good the way they went about it. So yeah, so they took t they took a uh, Tartaglia to jail. Apparently, so he's he's in there. But we got the cutscene, and it appears that uh, he will not be getting out for a while. Huh. So now we get this. So this is actually a world quest. I bet you it's probably not like a whole thing. I bet you just like kind of check it out. But yeah, that was good. That was good. It definitely wasn't. I'll say it wasn't as momentous as in like what we had to do. If that makes any sense. I don't know. But like Simru Act One, I definitely think that the Fontaine beat that one, and the Simsara was cool. But I, I just think I like I like how we're doing different things as we move along. You know. We were in a Samsara the first time, and and now we are kind of like in a court case. So it just it makes sense for like what region we're in. But this one was like kind of like a sit back and kind of watch, you know, 